Hey guys, it's Christine Bertram and I'm coming to you live from the hive on a Tuesday morning. It's January 3rd. I went to look at my calendar and it's not even there. I think it's January 3rd. It was the first on Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. Today is Tuesday. You guys, if you originally saw there, I put fitting florets as the name of this class when I was doing my connections up here. And then I'm like, oh yeah, I'm not doing fitting florets today. <laughs> I had to catch myself. So I had fitting florets on my mind because about an hour ago, I sent the fitting florets PDF out to all those who are registered for that class already. So yay, that's out and about you guys. So you should be able to see that if you are registered. So we have a bunch of people already here. Yay, there's Dawn. Happy New Year, you guys. It's the first class of the new year. Awesome, awesome. Hi, Cindy Bruntree. There's Susan Bellamy from Florida. Woohoo! And we have Mary Carls from Jericho, Mary Hartman, <laughs> Debbie Schultz, uh, Dawn is uh, there, you guys. I, you know what? My eyes are still waking up, you guys. I'll be honest with you. I'm not used to the 10 a.m. morning classes. Hi, Pat Detlifson. Hi, Sandy Wicklander. Uh, there's Linda Hall and Cindy Hutchings. Woohoo! So we've got a good crew here already. You guys, I am not a morning person. I don't know if you know that or not. I am definitely a night owl by nature. I have been my entire life. So I made sure to have a cup of coffee <laughs> before we got started because I know if I set it next to me, I never drink it. So I'm like, I gotta just slam it before we get going and that will help wake me up. <laughs> oh, hi, Linda Kester. Hi, Jennifer Jones. Hi, Annette Rollin. I, uh, I thought, well, should I have done this class at one or do I do it at 10? Because I'm more of an afternoon person. But I thought, no, if I set it for 10, it'll It'll happen at 10 and then I'll have the afternoon to work on things. And, and lo and behold, I have to take Honey to the vet today. Hi, Mary Lemke, eight inches of snow, not going anywhere. She is snowed in. Hi, Barbara Rudolph. <laughs> um, so Honey was too sick to get her rabies shot the last time I went in with Tigger. And so now I gotta take her back to get her rabies shot because they have the little snip snip next month. Uh, <laughs> they're at like five months old now. <laughs> hi, Ann Bellinger. Um, hi, Mrs. Donsa. Can I watch to see what you are doing and learn even though I'm not a paid member or paid, absolutely. You guys, every one of my classes that I do is free to watch. It's if you want the kits and you want materials sent to you, that's when there's a cost because it costs <laughs> me money to send it to you and make up those kits. But yeah, I put it out there that you guys, anybody can watch and we have a great community of people, Mrs. Dosna, <laughs> um, that watch. And so it's a great place to be. Uh, so uh, yeah, so you guys, I so it's a good thing I have this class for 10 because the vet only had a 2.30 appointment open for me today. So yay. All right, so put, to put it out there, you guys, we are doing the Ringed with Nature card class. I call this an ad hoc class, meaning it was not on the original calendar. I came up because I had extra packs of this designer series paper from Celebration, and we decided to put a class together. Hi, Mary Allen from Montana. Thanks for sharing. Um, we put an extra class together along with the um, fitting florets was ad hoc, you guys. That was never on the original calendar. Anytime we add something that's not to the original calendar, I call it ad hoc, meaning impromptu, um, as needed. <laughs> we don't really need more card classes, but it just ends up being that we make more card classes because we want to. Uh, so this is an ad hoc, you guys. Um, Thursday night, though, is like a traditional class. We have the catalog launch party. Um, but to put it out there, if anybody's watching this, I have three more sets of cards, and you can kind of actually see them. There's a box over there. <laughs> uh, Mom and I and Diane, we kitted up um, 60 sets of cards uh, no, I take it back. Yeah, something like that for this class. Um, we have th 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 eight left, maybe. Like, they're, the card kits are ready to go. It's just a matter of getting the different products to add to it. Um, and I've already had the designer paper. I think I have nine left for this class. So as you guys are watching today, if you are interested in signing up for registering for this class and you've never taken a class with me or you have, just reach out to me and just double check that I still have it. Most likely I will, even if you're watching this video, let's say in five days, um, I don't think nine of them will go very fast. And if these stay as um, available, I move them to the past classes section of my schedule. Um, the fitting florets class though, you guys, that I have on Friday morning, I only have three sets of cards left for that. So 
Um, so yeah, these two ad hoc classes are almost sold out, which is awesome, but they are available in case you do decide, oh, I want to take this class. So, and I'll go through that once we get started. I'll show you what you get for this class. Um, I do have some stuff though to go through. I've got Happy Mail. So I thought, you know what? I always like to show off Happy Mail before we get started. It allows people to get some, get time to get into the, um, PD or into the YouTube video. Uh, hi, Christy Warren. All right. So... I have Happy Mail. I have a few piles of it. We're going to rock and roll through that, and then we'll go ahead and get started with class. And um, yeah, I have three piles. <laughs> Let's look and see what I have, you guys. So, um, all right. We have from Debbie Schultz, Buzzy at Work Schultz. Um, she sent me a little gift in the mail um, made by a bee and then a little baby honey orange blossom. So a little lotion honey bar, and it's actually got the imprint of the bee on it, so I love it. And then a little card here. Well, I shouldn't say little, a normal size card. <laughs> um, so, and it's got the textual element. And Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. And then she put a post-it note in there, so I'll be able to use this card uh, next year. So thank you so much for that, Debbie. I love it. And I have one here, you guys. I got this one. Is from Jennifer Jones. And Jennifer, you're watching. Oh, my goodness. Oh, she cased um, the Let's Just Stamp, not Let's Just Stamp, ink papers. Oh, thumbs up. <laughs> oh, you're right, Hilde. How was my birthday? We'll talk about that. Um, what Cindy is talking about is the thumbs up, though, you guys. I forget this every time. So it's awesome that somebody always reminds me. But that's the thumbs up right there. All you got to do is click it, and that's awesome. Jennifer Jones cased the ink paper scissors layout. And she made me a purplicious birthday card. It is awesome. And she even sponged these little snowflakes. I love here what you did to this, Jennifer, calling out that the, those snowflakes are separate little pieces. And um, then she um, has purple glimmer paper here. I love it. So very pretty, Jennifer. This one is from my Aunt Marge. And it came with this the flap. And here, you guys, this is funny. It's not funny, but what card do you send to the queen of stamping? Thought this touch of purple would be nice. Have a great day. Love, Jim and Marge. So, yes, very, very pretty. Now, this card, you guys, is not a handmade card. But I will tell you what you could do to make this card into a handmade card. You could cut, like, fussy cut around this and add this to the top of your own cardstock. This is where I would take and cut these out and you could use this on your envelope flap or like on the bottom edge on the inside of a card. Like you could completely redo this card and make it into a handmade card because it's so pretty. Very pretty. Thanks, Marge. <laughs> and this one comes to me from Lisa Spacek. Um, purple penguins. <laughs> so glad it's your birthday. And she said that she's um, keep it wishing me a very happy birthday. Keep up the amazing work. Thanks, Lisa. Very, very cool. So that's that penguin set that went out. The French set might still be available. This one comes to me from Judy Sharp, I believe. Yep. Judy Sharp, uh, with the truck on the back with the tree, sent me a Christmas card. And then on the inside, wishing you loads of holiday cheer. You guys, that was a set that is, if you find it at a used stamp sale that people grab that one, <laughs> there were a few sets. For that um, or um, there were a few different versions of that loads of love and um, it was always a hot commodity this is ribbon and it, it it looks like it's stamped on and stitched and it's all imprinted on there so thanks Judy I did get your payment for classes thank you so much this one is from Donna Hale um, story on this card you guys uh, she mailed it on the 20th of December um, lots of mail came in throughout the Christmas holiday break. You guys, if you didn't know, I went to my parents for four days, pretty much four days from Friday till Monday, came home for one hour to check on the cats just to make sure they had food and water. Uh, and they were still alive, right? That's always a good thing. And, <laughs> um, I got some mail in the interim, opened it up, set it aside, put it on a pile, forgot all about it. And, <laughs> So it gets to be like January 1st or December 31st. I'm like, Donna, did you ever send the check just checking? And she's like, yep, I sent it on the 20th. And I'm like, oh, I wonder wonder what happened. Here, the cats then started playing with papers on my table, like, like a stack, and they knocked them all on the floor. And the interim picked them up, and here this card was with the check from, that Donna sent on the 20th. And so the postal service did not disappoint. It actually came on the 23rd, I think. So cute little bow on the side here. But yes, funny story, you guys. It's the hustle and the bustle of the holiday series season and things can get lost in the interim. <laughs> uh, this one comes to me. Oh, I think that this is, oh, who is this one? 
Is this Jeannie Parker? So I had an envelope from Jeannie Parker, but I don't think this is Jeannie Parker's. Hmm. Uh, I have to think about this one. This is that Expressions and in Ink die cut, and there's a little banner on here. Um, Jeannie, I wonder if, I don't think that's yours because yours had a note and you hand wrote. I'm still looking for yours. Um, there's the embossing folder on the back. It's like Ornate Garden, and she's got some of the in color shimmer paper back here. Uh, very pretty and some pink gems. Oh, man. Okay, I'm going to think about this one, who that's from, so I can give credit. If it's yours, don't hesitate to say, yup, it's mine. Uh, this adorable little box comes to us from Pamela Leahy. She sent me this in the mail. It's one of those little boxes that opens up, and candies are in it. And this is the Fitting Florets paper, you guys. Look how pretty this blue is. Oh, man, I just lost. Um, there was a gem on there. Hang on. Let's get that back on here. We'll stick it right there. Okay, so you guys ready for it? This is a little 3D project. It's super adorable. And this opens this way, that way, and then these boxes flip down. And then each one of these <laughs> has a little chocolate in it. And I got a Linder truffle. And I think they're all like the yellow one. Um, yeah, look at this. It's so cool. So I know Anna Rabadou gave me one like this as well. So this is, must be the cool new box to make. And it folds up so adorable like that and features some of that fitting florets paper. That one is my favorite pattern out of that whole pack of fitting florets. So that's from Pamela Leahy. So um, Deanna Stell uh, sends my mom and dad cards with every mystery card. And so this is, and I take it from my mom and bring it to show with you guys to share. Um, this was the mystery card layout for December and it was using the gnome paper and she used some of that iridescent trim and it opens like that. Yay! So Mary wishes for lots of joy at Christmas. So that was Dion's mystery card. And now I give it back to my mom and my mom gets to use it. And then uh, Miss uh, Helen Chase sent me this in the mail, you guys. <laughs> Be happy. It's a little, um, I think what you do is you put paper. I used to have some of these like 15 years ago. Yeah, this says 1999 on it. You would put paper on it and run it through. And what it does is it imprints where the negative space is. So it's a little template. Very cool. Thanks, Helen. And this one, oh, look at this one with the matching envelope. This is from Ann Bellinger. I love it. Ann always decorates her envelope flap here, and she's using some of that dainty delight paper. So this is featuring some of the new celebration paper. And this was a birthday card, birthday wishes for a wonderful year of good things to come. So pretty, Ann. Thank you so much. I love it. It's purplicious as well. And this one is from Wendy Kruger uh, for a birthday. Um, hope you enjoy lots of sunshine, love, and hugs. Yay. Uh, some of that wonderful world DSP. So, you guys, my birthday was on the 1st. I am officially a New Year's baby. I was not the first one of the day. I was the second, so I did not get all of the goodies, like the savings bond and all that good stuff. Um, but neither, needless to say, I'm so happy my birthday is on the 1st. It's, it's good. Um, and we play games all day. This is from Patty Hins. Again, you guys loving the purple and the greens. Birthday blessings to you. And she has a little card in here that says, The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. So she adds this little card to her cards. I love it, Patty. Look at the inside on there, too. Very pretty. I love that. It's from Hues of Happiness, that sentiment. And that's where the flowers, I believe, are. If I had to guess, I might be guessing wrong, though. <laughs> All right. Hi, Mary Schreiber. Good morning from snowy southwest Minnesota. Oh, you could. Yeah, there's a snowstorm going through. Uh, this one is from. Oh, I love it. This was from Judy Immel. This was a class card that we had, and she used that for me um, for my Christmas card. Yeah, my birthday is always a holiday, and we start celebrating it on New Year's Eve. <laughs> so I get an extended birthday. This was using that pine cone set from last year painted christmas i think where is this one very pretty so judy immel thank you for that one all right you guys i'm gonna drink some water gotta stay hydrated right okay and then this one is from miss karen wetstein purplicious again look at this beauty Hues of Happiness designer series paper and then she used some of the dsp flowers as well a nice little circle in the back and happy birthday. Some of that um, in color ribbon with some butterflies, butterflies. A birthday should be happy. Just 
perfect through and through, especially when the day belongs to someone as special as you. So I loved it, Karen. Thank you. Oh, you guys must now know I am purplicious. Okay, you guys, I accidentally ordered a French stamp set. So if there are any people who do watch me that need or use French stamps, um, Stampin' Up! replaced this for me and they're sending me one in English, which is awesome. But they told me to keep this one and do with it what I might. And so I want to give it away to somebody who watches me that um, lives in the U.S. That I know, and that sucks because because um, if you're in Canada, you probably want French, right? <laughs> but um, I want to ship it within the United States so that it's only a few bucks to ship it. Uh, so if you're in the United States and you need a French set like that, just let me know. I If I get more than one, I will definitely do a drawing for it. I also have here another Purplicious card, and this one comes to me from Kathy King from Bend, Oregon. Look at these beautiful silver snowflakes, and she did the um, that waterfall kind of easel card that we've been doing a lot of. I love it. And actually, one of the cards for Fitting Florets uses that layout. Happy birthday. And then she's got a note in here wishing you the happiest of birthdays. I love that sentiment as well. Very cool, Kathy. Thank you for the purple card. She put a little flap with the um, iridescent vellum on here from the snowflakes. This one, you guys, look at this beauty. <clears throat> I believe this is from, if I had to guess, it was Kay. Yep, Kay Warren. Look at this, using the perfect plants, a different layout. It's a fun fold. I love it. I think that this is going to be in our future somewhere, sometime. And it's not that complicated. I love it how she put a window sheet here and it makes it look like it's inside of a house. You're like, you're looking through and that plants are hanging outside. This is that set that was from, it was a sweet last, uh, last annual catalog. And there's that saying again, wishing you the happiest of birthdays. I think it's from Charming Sentiments, but very cool. I love the layout. So cool. Thank you, Kay. This one is from Christy Warren. And it was awesome. She had it in this cellophane bag. And she, so it's like when you, you know, you write with a marker on there. So it came and you could see what was inside. Happy birthday. And so she's got a purple card for me too with a snowman. Oh, you know what? I have to say this is wrong. This is Randy Schultz. Okay, so, hey, oh, wait, wait, wait. This is right here. Okay, let me back up. One moment, please. Kay came in this right here. Kay Warren came in this, like this. So the envelope was like that. And so when she put it in the clear, it allowed, hi, Jean Maxwell from Phoenix. It allows me to reuse this envelope. And then it's in this clear cellophane, which is perfect. And so that's how that came. And then Randy Schultz had a purple um, snowman card. So we got a, yeah. So that's right. So that's why you guys, I started to save the envelopes <laughs> until I did my lives. Otherwise I confuse myself sometimes. All right. So we've got that. I think that was like Snow Wonder was the name of that set. And so this was from Randy Schultz. There's that pretty sentiment, wishing you all the happiness you can imagine from Hughes of Happiness. So there's our snowman from Randy. Thank you, Randy. And then this one is from Doo -doo -doo. Okay, Carla Basilar. I and I haven't met Carla, but I will meet be meeting her this coming next like not this week, but next week. She's attending the Winter Creative Escape next Friday with um, Tracy Swords. And so she sent me a Christmas card. Um, and his little wonderful snowflake on there, some of that new shimmer paper that's in the mini catalog and some lights of glow paper. So that's from Carla. Hi Penny Powell from Florida. It's still in the building process. I love it. And the cats are going to put their touch on it. <laughs> this is from Linda Hall. Look at this beauty. Purple again, using the fitting florets. A great use of the hearts. Uh, um, so awesome. There's a lot of complexity to this card. So it's like she die cut the oval with the hearts. And then she ran that piece. Um, also, at the same time, deckling the, you know, so it's a deckled rectangle with this die. And then she embossed it with the, time-worn type embossing folder. And then there is a frame here that she colored. Uh, and then she's got all these beautiful, she um, stamped these twice and then die cut them. And then she's got some vanilla white ribbon. It's like, it's like a cross between vanilla and white. So it's like softer. And then some of the old olive trim from the Happier Than Happy set. And then some purple gems. <laughs> this to me would have been a perfect addition to the class that we're doing on Friday. I love it. 
I love it. And look at the inside. Deckled rectangle, deckled rectangle. So stamp some in here. Oh, sending you smiles for every moment of your special day. So very pretty, Linda Hall. Very gorgeous. I just, it's gorgeous. I love it. Okay. And then this one is from Miss Julie Frost. This is that Flowers for Every Season. That was from a couple catalogs ago. Scallop contour dies and some white woven ribbon, it looks like, with the magenta madness and misty moonlight. And, and a nice little sentiment on the inside for me. So thanks, Julie Frost. This one is from... I hope you guys enjoy this. I, I, I like to share your cards that you send to me. <laughs> Hopefully it inspires you and gives you more ideas. Uh, this is from Christina Bernards, uh, and she decorated her envelope. This is that Harvest Meadow uh, stamp suite that was from the Holiday Mini Catalog last year. Um, hi, Stacy Ray. Uh, sending birthday wishes, and she's got some layers going on here as well, an embossed background, a little slip of colored paper here, some stuff in the background, and just that circle gives another dimension and a pretty little flower. Uh, she's got lots of layering on the inside as well to decorate. So very pretty, Christina. Yeah, I had you, I had you for a special. Oh, thanks, Linda. <laughs> oh, I love it. Um, this is from Beverly Smith um, down in Arizona. Ah, yours, it got ripped off here. Arizona, yes. Uh -huh. All right, a uh, little Christmas card. Look at that shimmery ribbon. A triple bow there, you guys. There's three little humpty humps there, I'm pretty sure. Nope, it's two. It's a double bow. I love it. And then a little bit of, of copper foliage coming down. And she likes it. I, I've noticed that, like, the oval with a little um, scalp, you guys, this is a great way if you don't stamp your sentiments straight, you can always mask that or cover it up by putting a label on the inside. So thanks, Bev. This one is from Hilda Nell. Hildy, this is her Christmas card that she sent me. And she's got the painted Christmas or painted season paper. Um, love and joy. I always love that sentiment. That's like the Christmas to remember. It's in the annual catalog. And she's got the little bow, bow there with some berries. Very pretty, Hildy. I love it. She's got a cute little heart seat next to her name, too. <laughs> Very pretty. This one is from Miss Susan Bellamy. Look at this one. The navies and the silvers with a little glimmery tree. Some stars. I loved this frame. This, hi, Diane Bogenhagen. Hi, Randy Schultz. Thanks for sharing. There's Mary Lemke. Thanks. I like, okay, you guys like seeing the inspiration. Great. I love it. So then I don't mind sharing. <laughs> and this one is got a little saying on the inside for Christmas. Oh, she used one of those little adhesive backed stars. Uh, oh my gosh, Susan! <laughs> Susan, are you watching? I have your check. Oh my gosh, it's here. Oh, Susan's another one where I'm like, I don't know what happened. Is like the mail like hosed up? Susan, I've had your your check here probably since you mailed it. Oh my gosh. Okay, well then we're set. <laughs> oh, <clears throat> you guys, I emailed or I messaged Susan like maybe, what is today? Tuesday, like Friday. Saying, hey, did you when did you mail? She's like, I mailed it. I'm like, okay, well, it'll get here when it gets here, you guys. I'm never really worried about it. But now I know why I've had it the entire time. Oh, man. Susan, if you're watching, I got it. Yay. <laughs> and I got your beautiful card. Oh, I'm going to put that somewhere else, though, so I don't, like, find that next year. Oh, you guys, laugh with me, right? Not at me. <laughs> All right. This is from Dawn Reader. Uh, she has here that hardwood embossing folder. Um, a little Mary with the wreath. I love it. And then the color is like a mint macaron. So thank you for this beautiful card, Dawn. Another purplicious card, and this one's from Julie Bierschbach. And she stamps that sending sunshine love and big hugs on here as a protector. And the uh, hues of happiness on here. And she did the purplicious card for me, that sentiment. I love the font and then that script in the middle. Very pretty, Julie. Love it. And then this one is from uh, uh, Karen, uh, Karen Duell. Karen and Jody Duell. And they did a step card. You guys check this out, the complexity of this one. It's got like that ladder here or like the stepping. And they've got the tree from Lights of Glow back here, the penguin and a snowman, earmuffs, the reindeer from Peaceful Deer. Oh, it's just it's like so much going on. And then um, if you wanted to, you could include like a piece of paper here if you wanted to write a sentiment on it. So cool. Look at that guy. <laughs> Lots went into that one. All right. And then we've got one more little pile here, you guys. This one, Mary Hartman, I think you're watching. 
So I believe that this is from you because you told me that you sent a card to me and you forgot the return address and you didn't sign it. And I'm thinking that this is yours. <laughs> um, this was a card that was from the Lights of Gold class that she must have cased. Um, and I get to use it. Hi, Chris Nebaum. I get to use it again when you guys don't write in it. And um, this, you guys, some people will put card protectors in so it helps to um, protect the embellishments. All right, so Mary Hartman, I believe that this is your pretty card, so thank you so much. I wanted to share this one with you guys. This is from Gail Kane, um, and she's got, it's not handmade, you guys, but um, it's it's still pretty, and this is another one where you could reuse these deer on the front to add to your own, so you can repurpose things, you guys, like even the, um, the decoration on the outside here, you could kind of cut that and add that to a card to use like store-bought cards and take elements from them to create your own um, handmade card. So Gail Keane gave me that one. This one is a fitting florets card from Stacy Warner. Um, wishes for a beautiful birthday. She used some of the lights of glow paper with the fitting florets or framed florets um, die cuts. So that's really pretty. Thank you, Stacy. This one is from Donna Simmer from Canada, you guys. I got a card from a Canadian friend that watches me, Joy to the World. And it's like all of this is stitched, you guys. This is all ribbon. So Donna, I don't know if you did this or if somebody else did this, but all of this is fine little thread sewn. And these little beads here are actually sewn onto the card. So if you look at the back of it, you can can see everything is stitched back there. So it's very pretty. A lot of time went into this card. Uh, thank you, Donna. Um, you have a wonderful Christmas as well. You guys are so excited about what's coming up in the new year. Okay, Mary Hartman, that's your card. Perfect. So I had it right. This one is for my Aunt Karen <clears throat> Beagle and my Uncle Jim. The hydrangea set here. Uh, the galvanized paper and she's got a hydrangea on here very pretty card karen and she put a little sign in there that says to so this is what i put in all my cards to you guys generally so that you can reuse my cards i didn't sign this card before i sent it off to you but it holds my warmest thoughts invisible but true and if you find a time to, you need to brighten someone's day then take this card sign it and send it on its way and you guys i do that because it gives the card another life <laughs> and then hopefully another life and then cards just don't get thrown in the garbage they get to get used again and again Again and again. So this one is from Miss Kathy Beck, you guys. This is going to be cased as well for a future class. I love how she created these little tags and put the tags inside a pocket. And I just love it that this is a great way to use designer paper that is pretty on both sides because what happens is you have your one side and then it folds over, it's cut at an angle, and it creates this little pocket for these tags. It's super cool. So this is from the Peaceful Cabin from last holiday catalog, and then some celebration paper. And then it opens like that. So from Miss Kathy Beck. All right, we're almost done with the Happy Mail, you guys. This one is from, oh, so my little niece is a nephew and my brother and sister from Christmas. So they had a great time with us at Christmas time. Oh, and then it also included, I think here, a birthday card. From them, So this was a paper pumpkin from last year, I believe. So this is from my, and they all signed their name. So every one of them signs the name and their little Lily. She puts a little heart for her eye. I love it. So that's my birthday card from my brother and his family. We lost a little sequin. We'll put that there. And this one is from Margie Schlegel. Woohoo! From Two Rivers. She used the peaceful bows it was from the holiday catalog you guys the bows of happy um, like i did it for ink paper scissors in november the bows set <laughs> um and then she's got the fern embossing folder back here so very pretty uh and i've got that from margie she loves she oh she loved the christmas card i sent her yay and then i have one more here carolee crab is also from trivers and she did the orchid oasis with that merriest moments embossing folder on the back here. And then the nativity set that was in the catalog, the Christmas catalog. So thanks and hugs back to you, Carol Lee. Now by process of elimination then, this left Miss Jeannie Parker with this card right here. And I believe Jeannie, you had a piece of paper in here with a little love note. 
And I think I took the love note out and I hung it up somewhere already. <laughs> I think that's what's happening with this one. So I think by process of elimination, that's yours, Jeannie. So, um, and we already talked about that with the open weave ribbon and the polished pink. So yay. Oh, you guys, that was a lot of happy mail that came in. I hope that that was okay with you that we went through all that because it's always more fun to see more cards, right? <laughs> Ooh, okay well I did that now because I feel like the cards that we're making today are not as crazy as um, some of the in like intense cards that we make normally so um, we are going to be making six cards today you guys uh, and there's two of each for those that are doing this class so this is like a stamp a stack but just to go back really quick because uh, I think it was Hildy that asked about my birthday um, it was good uh, <laughs> I'll be a little honest with you guys. Um, it took me till about a few years ago to not be hung over on my birthday. Uh, you know what? Hi, Christy Warren. <laughs> because you know what? You usually go out for New Year's Eve and you can drink more than what you normally do because you're celebrating and ringing in the new year. And it took me until like in my late 30s to really get that out of my system. And now it's like, no, I don't want to feel like that on my birthday. So it was a great day. Uh, not so great for Tyler. Tyler was a little under the weather. <clears throat> Uh, but I didn't care about that because I felt good. <laughs> and so um, we made breakfast with my friends, John and Tiffany. They came over and we had ham and bacon and eggs and we, Tyler made pancakes and we um, had mimosas. Um, I'm not a big mimosa fan. Thanks, Melanie Foy. But Tyler loved, like, drank them. But um, yeah, so I put a little... Um, Bailey's in my coffee, so that was good. And uh, we played gar games. We played marbles and we played um, some card games um, all afternoon, you guys. I stayed off my phone. Um, I was all caught up. I will have to say that I was all caught up on emails. I was so proud of myself on the 31st. I worked on emails all day, pretty much from like 10 until 5. So like about seven hours, I sat at the computer on Saturday writing the tutorial for this class and then also getting through emails, you guys. There was so much between Christmas and New Year's Eve, and with kidding up a thousand cards for not a thousand, we did 500. There was 500 for the Kellogg launch party. It was a lot of cutting. That was intense cutting for the Kellogg launch. So, so I needed to catch up on emails, you guys, and I finally got through all of them that I needed to. Uh, thanks for sharing, Annette Rollin. Oh, thanks, Mrs. Dasa for, Dasna for the happy birthday. I finally I got through emails, you guys. It was so refreshing to go into Saturday night thinking that I was cleared up with emails. Yay. <laughs> and so um, it took me a little bit, but I got through them. And so I, you know, could, so on Sunday then for my birthday, I didn't feel like I had to go onto my email at all. So I pretty much stayed off my phone. Um, unless people were wishing me happy birthdays, then I would reply back. But oh, you guys, I, I stayed off my phone. And then after John and Tiffany left, we went to another friend's house and we played more games. We played more marbles and we played Mario card games. And so it was good. And then, and then my birthday was done. And then we had yesterday and yesterday I wrote the fitting florets PDF, not the, yeah, fitting florets PDF tutorial and the Kellogg launch party, you guys. It took five hours to write those two tutorials and it's like, oh my gosh. And then Karen Wetstein proofed them and I got them out to those who registered this morning. So it's been a lot of writing, you guys. <laughs> so, but here we are, we're going to make some cards and um, what's on the docket for this week, you guys? We are kidding up for the winter creative escape this week, and we're kidding up for let's just stamp and the monthly. So there's a lot more. I, I estimate about 1,200 cards are getting kitted up this week. Uh, so lots happening, and we're prepping for the winter creative escape, which is next week. So there's a lot, a lot going on in the mix. And if there's anybody local to me uh, that wants to help out, let me know. Um, there's always little bits and parts that can get done, but I have got my elves helping me already, uh, working behind the scenes so that we're ready for next week. So yay! Okay, so that was a little update on <laughs> what was going on. Um, so now, again, if you've emailed me since Saturday, I don't think I've gotten back to you, <laughs> but I will catch up again. Um, so let's do, um, let's see here. We'll do roll call, you guys. So let's go down here. So we're doing the Ringed with Nature class, you guys. Um, let me just show you what, what you would get potentially here if you do this class. So I actually have here um, Anna Zastro's. Um, and she needed to get the paper. So this was um, for a porch pickup. 
when I do porch pickup, I put it in a cellophane bag like this so it all stays together. When you guys get it mailed, I put them all into like a bubble mailer type thing or like a padded envelope. So this is Anna's and she is allowing me to cut hers up so I could show it to you. So for those of you who did this class, you either had an option with paper or without paper. And so if you got it with paper, you got the DSP. And if you got it without paper, um, you would have gotten a pack of card kits. And this actually has 12 card kits. Uh, yeah, 12 card kits in here. You got the two rolls of ribbon. You got the rustic metallic dots. And you got a half a pack of envelopes from Stampin' Up. These are the Stampin' Up basic white envelopes. I always include the white envelopes, unless you're Becky, Gandolfo, Becky's like, Chris, don't send me more envelopes. I don't need more envelopes. You keep your envelopes. And so, <laughs> so everybody but Becky got, um, if you got this class, you got a half a pack of envelopes. Um, so, so that's what would come in your kit. And so I'm not going to be using any of Anna's stuff, but I want to show you guys what we're going to do for this. <clears throat> and, um, before we do that though, I do want to do roll call. So so I have it broken down by people who got paper or who needed paper. So so that's how I have that. But you guys don't know that. But so Doris Munson, Carolyn Ketchmark, Becky Rohrer, Leslie McMinn, Becky Gandolfo, Sue Spiegner, Helen Chase, Michelle Datson, Susan Bellamy, Joyce Corneck, Tracy Reed, Mary Carls, Peggy Friedel, Annette Rollin, Barbara Rudolph, Anna Zastro, Marsha Dean. So all of you guys... Um, and then there's more. So Sandy, I got, I got you guys broken down in chunks here. It's like where I could find paper to write. <laughs> Sandy Wicklander, Diane Bogenhagen, Judy Immel, Julie Bierschbach, Kathy Ballard. And then we have Penny Powell, Donna Grushke, Sherry Everett, uh, Shirley Malarkey, and Debbie Buzzy at work Schultz. And I have enough um, kitted up for nine more people, I believe. So again, if you're watching, this is what you would get for your class. And what we're going to do first, you guys, is we're going to go through and cut the paper because you've got this pack and it was like Diane helped me sneak all of these papers into this plastic sleeve and so it's a tight fit okay um oh Susan yes I'm so happy I found the check too two thumbs ups for that <laughs> the mail system is actually better than what we think uh so you guys these are the cards there's six cards that we're going to do today so there's a few with blue um, navy bases. We've got a Christmas card in here, thinking of you. And, oh, what is this? Hang on. This is Jeannie Parker's. Okay, so I have to retract here. Jeannie Parker, I have no idea how your card ended up here. But this, we need to go back. So this card is not Jeannie Parker's. Okay, I don't think it is. I think it's somebody else's, but I don't know whose. Jeannie, I knew that there was a note in your card here. So this one is from Jeannie Parker. This is from the New Horizons class last, ooh, when was that? Last April, maybe. So, okay, I knew there was a piece of paper in it, and I thought maybe I had taken it out and put it up, but I apparently didn't, but I love it. Um, so, so Jeannie Parker's card is this one, yes. Now I put that back together, but that still leaves this one without me knowing. So, <laughs> oh man. All right, so at least we figured that one out. All right, so there are six cards we're gonna be doing today. And what happens is the there's not a lot of stamping on the outside. So you guys are going to, for those that like your cards to be exactly like the class cards, thanks for sharing, Diane, um, for that to be like class cards. For this, really, they're designed that you just need sentiments, okay? So the sentiments come from this Ringed with Nature set. These are carrying over. So this set is part of the holiday catalog, but it is carrying over um, for another catalog. So these are still available if you want these exact sentiments and that poinsettia. Okay, so what we're going to do, though, is you guys got to be very careful <clears throat> with this. Um, there are little bits and parts that they might start to fall out the bottom here, so I highly recommend you not pulling this out vertically. Pull this out horizontally. And what we're going to do is start adding to our piles. So what happens is you guys, all this includes the the bases, the mats, any die cutting, it does not have the designer paper in it. So either you're going to cut your own designer paper or you'll cut the designer paper that came with the kit. So let's see what's first. <laughs> so this top one, you guys, is the bird card here. And you can tell that because there's this piece right here. Okay. And um, 
what we're gonna do is we'll open up our designer paper and we're gonna cut these two pieces of designer paper and add them and insert them into this pile. And then what we're gonna do is work our way down the pile. There's a method to the madness with this. All right, so Anna, I got your slip here. So you guys, when you open up the paper, you know, and you, if you're working from a full, um, a partial pack of paper that you already had open, that works too. But you want to find the bird one, and it's got the blue on the back. Okay, <clears throat> so this, remember we're cutting for two as well. So there's two cards, not just one. And <clears throat> I believe, and I should pull up the PDF, but I'm just going to remeasure things. This is a five by two and three quarters. And then this is just a one inch strip here. And that doesn't have to be one inch. It could be three quarters inch. It could be a half inch. Um, no, it can't be a half. It could be three quarters though, but I liked it being a half, um, a whole inch. So what we're gonna do on this is grab out <clears throat> the trimmer and we're gonna cut it at five inches. So there's a pattern to this paper, you guys. Your birds, you want them going this way. And so what we're gonna do is turn our paper this way and cut it at five inches. This is extra, so we'll start a pile of extra. And then by two and three quarters. No, if you want this to be an extension, so you have this and then this, what you're gonna want is to cut this at two and three quarters and then cut your one inch next, like that. Or if you're gonna do three quarters, that's fine too. But now what happens when you glue these, it's gonna be a continuous pattern. So these two would go, be for one. And now just so you know, like this is what fits there. Perfect. And then what we're gonna do is cut another two and three quarters by one. Okay? Perfect. So this is extra, you guys. So set that off to the side. And put these pieces in with here. Now, I'm going to have a little bit of a um, disclaimer. I didn't pre-cut for my pack here, right? So uh, I have my designer paper over on the table there. I figured, well, I'm just going to take from Anna's at the moment and then cut her another set later. <laughs> so technically, I would be putting this here for Anna, but not to confuse you, I'm setting this off to the side for me to use on my kits. <laughs> And I will give Anna replacements. Okay, so that's the first card, you guys. Don't worry about this little stump. Well, so here's the story with the stump. Let's just talk about it. There is a set in here. There's a set, not a set, but a sheet of paper that is the stumps. And it's this one right here. And what you're going to need to do for that one, there's this big die in here. Now, if you don't have the dies, you're going to have to fussy cut, you guys. But if you have this die, I don't know if you know it, but this matches this perfectly. They designed this die to cut out this paper. See that, how it matches? And there's one set here. If you flip it this way, there's another set. So this is the equivalent for two cards. And if you cut that off over here, you can always use this for a strip of you know decoration later. But then look here, there's another one and there's another one. So if you have this die, you're going to want to cut this out as a big piece and then die cut it out. Or if you don't have the die, you're going to fussy cut your stumps. Now, by the magic of TV, I actually have mine done already. So there's a set of five. And when these cards were designed, they were designed so that all five were used. Mails the supplies to you, make the cards, and then she mails you a PDF with all the measurements and photos of the cards. Cindy Runtree, you're amazing for answering that. Thank you so much. And just to reiterate on that, so if you, what's happening here is I, like on Saturday, oh, it was Sunday actually, Sunday morning I got up because Karen proofread um, this Saturday night. And then what happens, Mrs. Dawes, not, like I'll email out the PDF tutorial and I say, here are the measurements, here's the recipes, supplies. I'll be live Tuesday, January 2nd. Oh, I had that wrong. Ha! Huh? Error, you guys. Um, Tuesday, January 3rd in YouTube. But I think most people get it. <laughs> I try, you guys. I have mistakes all the time, but I don't never see them all. But there, I just caught it that that was supposed to be the third. But this is what I email out to everybody. Um, so yes, 
So that, and then I mail out the class usually beforehand. Um, unless you sign up later, then you get it gets mailed later. Hi, Karen Drain from Erie, Michigan. Okay, so you guys that are doing the class with me, I hope that helps to call out that these stumps are like that. You also have, get this, you guys, there's five more here on the end. One, two, three, four, five, which actually would give you a fifth set. So one, two, three, four. And that makes up a fifth set, but you would have to probably fussy cut them or set up the die appropriately for these, like individually. Okay, so for those that are doing the class, get your stumps cut out. At the moment, you need two sets of them. And that fits back on here just like that. Uh, <clears throat> all right, so Anna will have to do that herself. And that's that one. <clears throat> Excuse, I always get the froggy in the morning. Now, <clears throat> I would highly recommend... Just taking everything from the card base. So, oh, you guys, I'm going to put my little stump here. So that's the little baby stump. Um, <clears throat> oh, I'm not giving it to Anna, though. Ha, ha, ha. Okay. Take this, set it off to the side, um, or put it on the bottom. However you want to do it, just just try not to mess up your piles. That's very important. Hi, Deanna Stell. Hi, Marsha Long. All right. So then the next one is the one you'll see stuff like this that we cut out the decorations or the mats from. Don't worry about that. That's nothing wrong with it. Um, that card is going to be this one right here. So that's the house card. And what happens is when you see these mats, they get covered up anyways. So this one is, <clears throat> excuse me, it has this here and then it has that. And the paper is the house one. And so let's pull out the house paper. I think it's this guy right here. And it's also five by three and three quarters. You guys, we tried to keep these the measurements easy for you so that you didn't get confused. And it's a horizontal card. So in this case, we want to cut our five inches here. <clears throat> now, if you look at this, the background's all houses, and that's where these houses, the house comes from here. Um, what we'll do is we'll cut our five inches. So it's five inches wide, right, like this. This is extra at the moment. Let's not just, let's not use it yet. And by three and three quarter. Oh, thanks, Marsha Long, about the thumbs up. That's awesome. Three and three quarters and three and three quarters. So that gives us our background. Okay, so that's this back piece right here. <clears throat> background here. And now there's a house here. So you have this little chunk that's left here. Now, if you're going to be making more cards, I would say cut yourself another mat here. Like, let's say you're like, oh, I want to make another one of this one. Just leave this because the only solid house that's in here is this one. This one has stuff cut off. This one is kind of cut off. Well, you could use this one, but I guess what you might do is consider coming back over here <clears throat> and cutting this house, cutting this house and this house, right? So I used this blue, that blue roof house, but... I also, by the magic of TV, cut out a couple more houses for me to use for this. So any house would look fine here. Um, this one, I left the trees on. That might look okay there. So um, you just want to pull out, if you're doing two cards, you want to pull out two more houses from what's left here. And you might already have scraps cut so that you could just pick out a house without having to cut. But we're going to leave that for Anna to pick out whatever she wants. I'm going to save this one for myself to use, and I'm going to put my houses on my pile. And this right here, the other thing too, you guys, there are these cute little trees. You could always fussy cut out some of these little trees and add them on the inside if you like. Okay, so it just depends on how much fussy cutting you really want to do in life. <laughs> All right, so now what I would do is grab everything from your two blue bases and move this onto the pile over here. You guys, I promise you, I normally try to be great about ordering things, but I did not think about writing the PDF in order of this. I, I forgot to even think about that. So this, the ordering that I'm doing this has no rhyme or reason to the PDF at the moment. All right, so this is your wintery card or your poinsettia card. So that's what's next. There's a piece of designer paper back there that is the poinsettia Christmassy one that looks like this. It's got the trees on the back. 
And then this one, the designer series paper is four and seven eighths by three and five eighths. Now to me, there's really not a lot of direction to this pattern. So you can kind of be easy going which whatever way you want to do it. But I guess to me, it does look straight this way. So I'm going to cut it this way at four and seven eighths. So four and seven eighths, like this way, this is extra by three and five eighths. So three and five eighths and three and five eighths. This is there for you guys if you want to make a third card right away. Like that's a perfect size to cut up already. But we have these two that go behind that white layer. So I'm going to keep one to use for me and I'll put one on Anna's pile. I'll come back later and insert. So all of the green from the green up goes with these two cards. So grab the from the two bases up and add it to your pile. The next card is a poppy base with mushrooms, uh, acorn. Uh, how I know is I see this little acorn starting to sneak out here. So be very careful at this point, you guys. We have here some acorn pieces and actually these acorn, they actually started to slip out from the bottom card. So this isn't the actual card we're doing next. It's actually got a poppy base. And if you kind of flip this up, you'll see there's greenery and mushroom pieces here. So we're working on this card. That one is the stump one, okay? So what you're gonna do is if you cut out your two stumps here and the two stumps here, you're gonna be left with, you know what I might do for Anna? I'm going to cut off this right here. And I'm gonna cut it this way so that she's can die cut those herself. And then we'll put those on the bottom. So what left, what's left is this right here, you guys, which is perfect because this is also five by three and three quarters. That's the <clears throat> magic number, you guys, five by three and three quarters. So, and it's going the right direction, which is awesome. So we're gonna cut this at five right here. This is a scrap. And then it's three and three quarters. So then turn it and you're gonna do three and three quarters and three and three quarters. Now, if you wanted to do another card, this is the perfect mat. You could cut it one more. <clears throat> and now this is what goes on top of that soft suede. I'll give one to Anna for now. I'm gonna borrow one. And then this also has two stumps on it. So it is going to be your biggest stump and the stump there's two that are very similar in size. It's the stump that when you have your stump, there's a little bit of green and the green is in the middle, not on the end. That's the stump we have here. They're very similar in size and they are interchangeable. So in case you don't catch that, but these are the two that would go with this card. And I feel like this one should have gone back with that guy. Okay, that's it for this one. So when you have those, take everything from the poppy and set it off to the side. And now we have a navy one with a floating frame. That is the paper that looks like this. And it's more springy. The size on that is five and a quarter by four. It is a traditional mat. So we're changing things up slightly. And this direction goes this way, right? So you can tell like you don't want it going that way and it's horizontal. So I want four inches here by five and a quarter and five and a quarter. So I'm actually gonna turn this and cut it at four first. So four, leaving this extra. And then I'm gonna turn this and do my five and a quarter this way now. So five and a quarter for Anna's pile, five and a quarter lending to me for the next hour or two. This is a scrap. Now, you could use this on the inside if you wanted. You could cut it at in half. If you cut it in half, you could put part on one card and then save the other for the other card, right? So that's an option to use this up instead of stamping on the inside. 
So I'm borrowing this one for the next moment in time. <laughs> okay, and um, this is a scrap. So then what you can do is pick up everything from these two navies. Everything else for this card is underneath here, okay? All right, so that move that off to the side. And then our last card uses the other piece of paper. So we tried to use, so Chris and I worked on designing these and we tried to um, we tried to use every designer paper at least once. And I think we accomplished that goal. So this one's what's left. This one has a direction to me. I feel like this is how it should be. And so this is a five by three and three quarter. So I'm gonna turn it this way and I'm gonna cut the three and three quarters first like that extra piece for the moment and then by five hi carmen melendez happy new year to you too and this is five for anna now this is the one you guys where there's the little mushroom or the acorn pieces so they might have fallen out but that's where they go so this is for anna this is for the piece i'm going to borrow this is extra now if you want you could cut a little strip and have that be on the inside here versus stamping an image. If you cut it at like three quarters of an inch, a half an inch, an inch, whatever you want, but I'll let Anna make that decision for herself and put that on the scrap pile. All right, so that leaves the last card here. And so I've got these all back still on my pile. So just to avoid confusion and mishaps, I highly recommend trying to keep this pile as flat as possible. And we're gonna grab the first one and work on it. Now, this is Anna's pile. And so I'm going to be working off of my pile over here. So I'm gonna carefully set her pile over here, but it's basically the same concept I've got. I set myself a side of cards. Ha <laughs> ha, you guys, I wrote down here. Hi, me, <laughs> I made it to myself. <laughs> Cause I'm a dork like that. I think that we're done with the paper trimmer. And what you can do with your papers now is take everything that's here, slide them back in. So this will be for Anna when she comes and picks, she's picking up her kit tomorrow. We'll put that over there. Okay, so now I have these completely backwards compared to what you guys have. So to fix it really quick, I'm going to just I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm going to, I feel like that should be the top one. Hang on, let's start over. So we're going to do blue. So I'm going to give you guys a little time to catch up in case you are working on something. I'm going to put these here. And then this was the floating frame one, or the house one. This was the poinsettia one. With, I'm going to put my house here, poinsettia here. And now I'll have these back in the same order as you guys. So that goes here. This is the floating frame one. Uh, and then this one goes here and there. So now I'm in the same order as you guys. Um, and I can throw, I'll save that for a little scrap roo. All right. There's not a lot of stamping, you guys. There's a little bit of sponging. So you're going to need to grab a sponge dauber. Um, everything that was used for die cutting primarily comes from this die set right here. There was a set called Fabulous Frames, I think. That's where that floating frame came in. Um, the deckled rectangles was brought in and the picture this. So what you're gonna see is this one card here has a frame right here, this frame. And then when you cut it, it die cuts out three pieces here. Those three labels were used on this card, this card, and this card. And then we pulled in some stumps for sentiments there. So. All right, let's get these back in order though. Okay, um, so we're gonna start with this one first. And if you guys don't have these stamps, it's okay, pull in anything um, that would fit in that spot. Hi, Deb Norman, I did have a great birthday. Um, tell Anna hello for me. So you guys, there are two Annas in my life. I think, I know there's Anns, but Annas, there's Anna Zastro and there's Anna Rebidou. And I believe, Melanie Foy, you're um, referring to Anna Rebidou. So Anna, when she watches this, um, uh, just so you know, Melanie Foy says hi. <laughs> and then Anna Zastro is the one who is um, doing the class. So on the inside here, I have this, 
there's a little foliage leaf thing. And I just realized now it looks dead <laughs> when it's brown. Maybe we should make it green <laughs> for these next cards. So we're going to grab that stamp and we need to grab green ink and this little guy here. You might not think to do this, but I thought when you put these two together, oh, hi, Catherine Healy. Happy New Year to you too. So there's these two, and that's what we'll grab out for right now. And we're only making one set, so I'm actually kidding this up for Carissa. So Carissa, when we design cards together, I, um, I give her a set. <laughs> so I'm gonna be making two piles here. So you guys are gonna make sure you have the same pieces here. There's a little acorn set. You should have a green leaf, or I should say two green leaves. You have a stump here, and then your inside is double matted. You guys, special perk to this class and fitting florets. Every one of the cards is double matted <laughs> for your pleasure. <laughs> so that um, when you look in the inside, you have an extra pop of color. So we've got this here. And now I think that I have, I'm gonna set, I, you guys, I feel like, you know, you never feel like you have enough space, right? Or I should say, you always feel like you never have enough space. What I'm gonna do is make one card with you guys just know that there's two. And so at some time, if you want to make, try to make both at the same time, great. And if you want to do one, make the other one later, your call. I'm going to make one with you. So you have your evening evergreen base and you have your double matting for the inside like that. So we need to do something on the inside. You have your two stumps and then you have your two mats for the outside and you'll have your acorn pieces. So let's Let's do a little bit of assembly, just because we can. I wanna get these two glue pieces glued together, and then what we're gonna do is put them on our card front right away. And so, definitely consumed a lot of soft suede, evening evergreen, and night of navy for this class, you guys, for paper. Um, make them pretty, please. No, Carissa, I don't have the paper cut, and I'm not stealing from Anna. <laughs> Oh, I'm not making two cards, um, 12 cards, you guys. That would uh, take a long, long time with this live. Um, but no, it doesn't hurt to ask, Carissa. <laughs> they will be there for you. I still have um, your cards to put together right here, Carissa. Like, look at these kits. Someday we're going to have to get together and make, these are your kits that you gave me to put together for these cards. I have them right here by my side for the day and time when I have moments to put to car more cards together. <laughs> All right, so that's put together. And what we can do is a little bit of stamping. Now these are photopolymer stamps. So I'm gonna grab out my piercing mat and we're gonna put this underneath. Now it says thinking of you on the outside and then on the inside we're gonna put that little leafy thing. So you might not have caught this, but when you stamp this little leafy thing, the branch and the leaf, you like that. And it's kind of like, okay, it looks fine like that, but it's got one more little leaf that's a single guy that you put in the middle like that. And it, to me, it completed it. It made it look nice. <laughs> like there was a lot of open space. And I don't know if it was intended to be like that or not, but I felt like it needed that. So we're gonna do this. And then we're going to do thinking of you. Now I'm not gonna stamp anything else on that inside because it could be, hi Kimberly Cronauer. It could be used for anything. This could be a birthday card. It could be a get well card. It could be um, a, a retirement card. It could be anything. You're thinking of somebody. So it could be thinking of you. Okay. And, well, Carissa, now you got me thinking. You know what? Ah! I'm going to stamp your sentiments on here because that I'll do. You know what? If that helps, I'll get that stamped for you. And then we'll put these cards together sometime in our future but I'm not sponging the edge. <laughs> so this will buy some time for those that are doing two cards. All right, so there's one and two. All right, so we'll make these cards together so that I'm not stamping for you. I'm stamping ahead so that we can assemble them together. So I'm not breaking compliance, right? Okay, so let's, uh, oh, we're gonna leave this open. And I believe, I gotta make sure that's cleaned out. Yep, so you're gonna take your sponge dauber and sponge around it. Otherwise it's so crisp and white that you, it's just, it looks too stark to me. 
So what we're gonna do is just sponge that. Carissa, you got me. <laughs> we're gonna sponge that all the way around the edge, like that. All right, now I think we're done with stamping. Hi, Judy Bobo, good morning to you. So Hildy just made a comment. She said she thought the, the branches side of the DSP can be used with the, owl, the new owl stamp. You betcha. That would definitely work. I agree. All right. Now this can get glued down to our soft suede mat. And I do like the leaf better in the evening evergreen versus the soft suede. <laughs> I don't know why I made it soft suede, but now I'm starting to think that looked like a dead branch. Hi, Judy Emo. So did you guys have a fun time guessing on these um, guessing games that I did? Uh, it's not done. So in case you're wondering what I'm talking about, on my Cards by Christine Facebook page, I posted 14 questions. And the 14 questions all had to do with how, like stuff for the business and the, the community. And uh, and I, I'm, I'm seeing Judy Bobo and Judy Immel both say hi at the same time. Um, it made me think about the name that is most popular um, the, in my community. So you guys, I put a couple dimensionals on the back of the acorn. And what I'm going to do is I put them so that they're hanging over the top. Because now what can happen is that little top will catch... And then it helps stick the top to the bottom. So that's ready to go, okay? So we're gonna set that over there. And then we're gonna grab the Stella pen and we're gonna Stella this leaf here. So yeah, so the question, in case you guys missed it, go out to my Cards by Christine Facebook page. You guys have until Friday night um, to answer any of the questions. I know that some of the questions got posted um, just on the 31st. So you might just be seeing them now. And so we wanted to give people enough time to answer questions. Oh, I think I mixed those two up. Hang on. So let's see where these other ones went. I think it's right here. Question mark. Oh, hang on. They're over here. I think these are the two that I do for this one. That one and that one. Yep. Um, so you guys have until a troll, you guys. Oh my gosh. So you guys, when you get this on here, all you have to do is hard press on it and you hit um, report and I like to use a sexually explicit one because they're talking about sex find. Yup, not good, guys. So don't click on it. Just report it. And when you report it, then it makes it get out of your feed here and it helps stop it from coming back in. So those are trolls, you guys. We had a troll that tried to impersonate the Cards by Christine page um, and we caught them and banned them from the page and... Um, tried to catch that as quickly as possible. So I'm gonna take my tear and tape here and I'm gonna put a little bit of it up at this top left back corner and I'm gonna attach that to my stump here. Something like that, that looks about right. You know, there's no rhyme or reason. Um, just get them attached. And then what I'm going to do is take another piece of tear and tape and attach this one at the top so this stump is gonna go something like that. If you're wondering, just kind of lay it on your card to see if it looks right. And I'm good with that. Now what happens, you guys, the ribbon is what is gonna be so intense for everybody, I think. Um, we definitely did double ribbon on this class and the fitting florets class. So this faux espresso ribbon is awesome. I love it. It's a great manly man ribbon. You know, like men don't need ribbon on cards, but I think you can get by with it when they're neutral, natural colors. So I'm at the end of both of these rolls and I've got more on the sidelines here. But what I would do now that you have this put together, um, so you want to... So I find that sometimes people put ribbon on the base of the card and then you're guessing how much and it doesn't work so good. I like to create that um, ensemble, is what I refer to it as, and get some tear and tape waiting in the wings here. And we're going to put tear and tape back here, right? So at the where the ribbons are, so diagonal and diagonal. And there's only three Judys, you believe. I think you're mistaken. 
Uh, Judy, there's a lot of Judys. Um, I'm not going to try to list them all because I'm going to forget somebody, but I know there's Judy Foskier, Fosky, Judy Kruger, Judy Immel, Judy Bobo, Judy, Judy, Judy. There's more. I, and I, at the top of my head, I don't, I don't want to forget anybody. So I'm not, I'm going to stop there because those are the ones that I can always remember first and foremost. Um, we're going to take and cut ourselves a couple pieces here and you can have them like this, go like that. If you see that, or you can make them go the opposite way. It's whatever you guys like, right? This is your card. Make it how you like it. But I want, um, I'm going to go like this. And ultimately, you're going to put one coming out that middle area like that. And we can always trim our tails if we want to. And then we're going to put one like that. So that might be a little long for the moment, but we're going to leave it. Now you're going to put one of those over the top. There's Judy Wibb home too, um, I think. <laughs> and then we're going to now, we do a tail and a loop. And so I'm going to do the loop first, bring it down here. You're going to need more tear and tape. Hold that down and take that off. So you guys are going to feel like a florist, I think, when you're done, like with ribbon and flowers and all that good stuff. I'm going to cut this. Hopefully it's the right length, but I can always trim it if I need to. But you're definitely going to need another piece of tear and tape to hold that down. Okay. Went to get my coffee at Dutch Bros, but I'm having too much fun <laughs> creating cards. You're going to need coffee though. Oh man. I know when we're done, I'm going to go grab some coffee too. All right. So we're not done. We need to cut another set here. So, so here's a trick to this too. If you guys fold the ribbon in half like this, or you cut what you need, when you cut it diagonally like that, now you've cut both at the same time. Okay, so we've got this one, and we're gonna have this come out that side. And then do the other one. Kinda have just tails hanging here. And you're gonna need tear and tape over that again. And I'm gonna need a couple more pieces waiting here, so let's rip them off right away and have them ready. So back to this ribbon, you're gonna make a tail, no, I'm sorry, a loop, loopy, and rip that off, and then a tail. And that comes out the side, we'll cut it kind of where we think it needs to be. I'm actually gonna put it long because I don't know which angle I want it to go. I can't tell what it needs to be at the moment, so we're just gonna cut a little long. And then let's see what we've got here. Looking good, looking good. Now all of this gets popped up with dimensionals. So grab those. Now I'm gonna leave my tear and tape backing on, I think. And there's plenty of height there that you don't need to add more dimensionals there because that ribbon got folded in half so high. So this is gonna go right here in the middle area. And this little guy right here, you're gonna grab a glue dot and put that right at the base of it. Now you could actually, too, these leaves are big enough just that one of these baby dimensionals fits on it. So I'm gonna put some dimensionals back here and then this gets tucked in like that. And now what we can do is figure out how our ribbon needs to get cut and finagle anything that we need to. So this one now I'm going to cut it this way, straight up. And then this one, these guys, I want them to be a hair shorter. That one, I think I might leave it. And the other thing too you guys can do, if you want to, is you can fray your ribbon. If you're not a, oh, I want to trim that one. <laughs> I just want a hair off of this guy. So this is where a ribbon scissors comes in very handy, you guys, that it cuts it very nicely. This is where now if you want to fray this to make it look more rustic-y and worn, you just take your pick tool or the scissors tip and just kind of pull these threads out and it gives it that worn look, just like that. Okay, um, acorn. Let's grab this guy since he's already put together and he's just gonna rest over the top of that. And I think that that is it besides embellishments. Now let's talk about embellishments. You guys got a pristine pack of ru rustic metallic dots, I hope. 
but I got these in the mail from Stampin' Up. That's how they came. <laughs> but they're not bad enough to not use, but they're not good enough to give to a customer or use for cutting apart to put in a class, right? So I called Stampin' Up and they sent me another pack, but in the interim, I'm not gonna let these go to waste. So if you guys do get something like this in the mail ever, you know, we can contact Stampin' Up or you can, or, you know, depending on if you're, you know, if you're my customer, I can help you. If you're a demonstrator, you can call Stampin' Up yourself and get them replaced and they will send you a new one. But for this class, I thought, oh, this is a great time to talk about it because honestly, these are, most of them are perfectly fine to use. They're just all over the board, right? They're every which way and in between. And so I'm gonna just be grabbing dimension, uh, these little rustic metallic dots. Now, I feel like I had five on this card at one point, and over the course of time, I lost one because we like to do our odd numbers for embellishments. All right, so there you guys, we got our first card. I'm gonna leave these set right here. We'll use that little guy too. This is um, first card in the books. Now, the designer series paper, you can easily stall that and it won't bleed. So go ahead and do that if you want to. You can even stella your ribbon. And I might trim those ribbon tails just a hair as well. Just make them a little bit shorter. Like that. All right, you guys, one down. Woohoo! Melanie Foy, I just read that today is your birthday. I remember that you are a January 3rd baby. So happy birthday to Melanie Foy today. Yay. All right, we're going to set this card over here, I think. And let's see what we're going to do next. All right. I think we're going to do the blue one next. And we're going to do this. And let's put that here. Okay. Okay. So you guys have a navy base. So make sure you go ahead and fold it and burnish it. This navy is that card here. And you're gonna need this. You're gonna need a soft suede mat. And then the white mat is for your inside. You need one of the floating frames and the deckled rectangle and navy, one of the, um, Two of the leaves, so you guys, when you look at these leaves, they are opposites, actually. There's two, one facing one way and one facing the other way. So I've got them that they're paired up. So these two are a pair and these two are a pair because these are the same and these are the same. So I'm gonna put two of them for Carissa's here. And then set my two off to the side and we'll go ahead and get our stamping done. So we just did the thinking of you, and what we're gonna need to do is clean it because we just stamped it in a brown color. So we're gonna stamp it in navy on here. And I think our foliage thing on the inside, we'll use green again. So grab your evening evergreen, and we're going to pull out the piercing mat again. Put that little piece of paper under here and we'll stamp that greenery. So the, the three leaves, three leaves first, and then that little single one can fill in this hole. And I love it that they're photopolymer, you guys. I think every, at this point in my life, I want every stamp to be photopolymer. I don't need any red rubber because it, I don't have to guess. <laughs> I love not having to guess when it comes to stamping. And so we're going to grab the navy ink pad next, and we're going to do a sentiment that is thinking of you. And you can put that right in the center, right there. I'm glad that you're having a blast, Melanie. That's awesome. Yay, it was Sharon Rush's birthday yesterday. We got a lot of January babies. And I will be completely, <laughs> disclosure here, you guys, I have not gotten the January birthday cards out. <laughs> Mom and I, we lost track of time. And uh, I need to print off the labels and then <laughs> we'll be working on them this week. So for those of you that have 
early birthdays in January. I apologize. You're not going to get your cards by your birthday, but you will still get your card. <laughs> uh, okay, I think we... Oh, I'm not going to tell you how many we averaged because then you guys will be able to, uh, to answer that question easier. So one of my questions I asked in the guessing game is how many birthday cards got sent out last year? So um, it's always a good question. So that got flipped over and we're going to adhere these down. And so this one goes on the front. And again, make sure you don't put it upside down. And then we'll put the other mat on the inside like this. That double matting takes it to the next level, you guys. Now you have this floating frame. The floating frame, I would definitely make it easy on myself. I'm going to sell it at first. Um, you could use all these little like miniature Stampin' Up! dimensionals if you want. But there's... Oh, look at that, you guys. Oh my gosh, that almost landed right on my frame. Ah, it's gonna be really stellified here. So there is rubbing alcohol in here and then that makes it a little bit runnier. <laughs> I don't know if you guys can even see this, but uh, it just got stellified. Okay, you might be able to see what Stella does when I, oh, you guys can see that now, right? That's Stella on steroids right there. Okay, so I squeezed my pen. Oh, and there's a little drip of it right there. Let's clean that up. Oh man, this is really, really glittery. So a little drop went right there. <laughs> so that's what happens, you guys. Want to be careful when you squeeze your Stella. Don't squeeze it over your project. I mean, had this been a full mat, it would have been Stella everywhere. And as long as I got it open, let's do our leaves here. Sometimes it's really hard to see what Stella does, but when you get to see her on steroids, then you can totally see what she's all about. In person, you guys always see it. All right, so there's our Stella Ing. And these foam adhesive strips would be great use for this frame. And Sandy's is January 8th. You and Elvis and my friend Raheem Nahim from Mercury Marine. <laughs> I used to work at Mercury Marine down in Latin America office, you guys down in Miami. And I worked with a guy by the name of Raheem Nahim. And uh, his birthday was January 8th, the same day as Elvis's. So I always remember that, <laughs> that Elvis's birthday is the 8th and so is his. And now I remember it's also Sandy Wickliner's. All right, so this is awesome to use. Oh, man, I got to make sure I catch that corner nicely. And I think we need, you don't have to do the whole entire roundabout here, but we're going to just put these up. So this frame, you got to be very careful now when you try to put this down. Not that, because it's like you got to get it straight. Otherwise, it's going to want to stick and tear. These foam strips are great for shaker cards, um, which there is a shaker card coming up actually in that rain or shine class in January, oh, January, April. They're a little bit higher, though, than your dimensionals. Just a tad higher. So keep that in mind. If you don't like cards having too much height, you might consider using baby dimensionals or using these. And you could cut the strips of these or like the sides of these and use them as well. This is important to get this on here straight. <laughs> yes, Elvis was older than you. Oh, yes. Right. And Raheem, I'd have to guess. He's probably 50 now. So when I knew him, he was 35. And that was 10 years ago. Yeah, he's probably 50 now, if I have to guess. Okay. Oh, I threw something on the floor. So there's our frame. Be careful how to put that down on here. Uh, the little deckled rectangle could get glued next. And that is definitely going to be flat right in the center area here. A great way to just, you get to see the designer paper. You don't cover up a lot of it, um, but you get to still see. I know that when Chris makes cards, she hates covering up the designer series paper because it's so pretty. But this is a great way to still see the majority of it without covering too much up. We're gonna use the tear and tape now on the corner of this label. One leaf comes out the top here. And I think we're gonna use this one. Mm, which one is it? I'm gonna say the other one actually. Oh, so this is what I did you guys. Sneaky, sneaky. Um, we're going to cut this 
so that we get to see both leaves. This one will come like that. And then now you have that little scrappy leaf that's left. What you can do is cut that off. And then you're gonna attach that back here. And hopefully you got a little tear and tape left. But that's how you get a little second leaf there. And then we're gonna put some of this stuff waiting in the wings over on the side here. Oh, Catherine Marie, Catherine Healy's birthdays too. Wow, lots of, see I said there's lots of January birthdays. This, mm, what we're gonna do, well, we got an end that's already good. So we're gonna use that on this side over here and then cut off. Oh, so that one will come out that side and then we're gonna make that one over here. We're gonna just trim it right away. So that's how we're doing, you guys, that's all we're doing is we're just adding lots of ribbon to the back of this. And then we're gonna take the this one, have it come out like that. We'll cut it, add a little tear and tape so that the next one has the ability to stick to it. And I'm not gonna worry about cutting that one quite yet. I'll cut that once it's on the card. And then we're gonna put a little more tear and tape right there. And then our little leaf, same thing on this one. You guys grab your scissors and trim that off. And then that one can come out the side like that. That's how you gotta do that to get, if, otherwise if you don't cut that, that leaf is gonna be back here and nobody's gonna see it. And you wanna make sure people see both leaves. And then we go back to our brown ribbon and what we'll do, cut it right in the middle so that we've got our two angles ready. Have that come out that side. Yes, they do, Judy. Those dimensionals do come in handy, absolutely. Thanks, Penny. Yep, hit those that like button. All right, we're gonna get some more tear, tape waiting in the wings here. And <laughs> got a hot mess going on. We need some more on this side. I'm gonna make it extra long because of that fraying over there. And definitely using some ribbon today, girls. That one can go like that. Oh, so update from Angela Knutson. She asked me last night about paper pumpkin. Let's just read this so you guys know this. She was having a hard time logging in to the paper pumpkin site and I thought maybe she just needed to try a different browser. Well, she called Stampin' Up and they are having issues with paper pumpkin in case anyone else says or asks about it. She said to let you guys know so that you're not wondering yourself. All right. Now this is going to go about here and don't worry, we're going to trim that a little bit. Um, how do we want to do this though? We're going to take little baby dimensionals and kind of put them strategically on the back here. Now that ribbon and all that stuff has a lot of height, probably about the same amount of height as the ribbon does. But what I'm going to do is put some tear and tape right on the back, right there. And then this is gonna go right in the center of that deckled rectangle. Nice. And now we can trim. I'm gonna trim this one going this way. Once you start cutting on this ribbon, you really have to commit and keep going. If you hesitate, it will kind of put a little line in it. And I'm gonna pull this back so I can see here. And we're gonna cut that one. And then this one, I'm gonna pull these apart just ever so slightly. And then cut that. We'll pull this one back so that we can get to this guy. There. Put it on right, yep, okay, good. <laughs> now there's 
a little bit of wishy-washiness going on with this. Like, there's, it's like, it's not good in my eyes. It's like, it needs help for stability purposes. So I'm gonna grab some glue dots, mini glue dots, and we're gonna feed them in to the area here so that things can start to get like adhered better together. So we're gonna put that together and just stick those glue dots. I think we're gonna put that back here now. So you can see now this is kind of nice and set and this one we need to do yet. Penny Powell, I'm getting rid of this for you. So that, I'm gonna pick this one. Oh, I didn't even grab it. So that can go in between there. And, oh, come on, little guy. There he is. And then I think one more that I want right in between here. So by going back and adding the demand, oh, there's one more glue dot. Let's use it. By going back and adding the glue dots, it helps to provide a little bit more stability so that it's not flippy floppy all over. Okay. We get to go back to these guys, these guys. Let's see if I can use that one. Ooh, it's stuck to the paper. Oh, it's not gonna work. Okay, so that one we might have to have help later. We're gonna put a little rustic one there. Um, the white label is good, another one there. And then a little guy and another big guy. All right, we've got another one done. If you wanna add a little Stella to this one, I know that it's already stella but if you wanna add a little more, you could always do the deckled rectangle back here once you've got that white label on because then you won't waste it. You can just go exactly where it is. You could always add a little bit to your ribbon too. Doesn't hurt. Okay, we got two done. Woohoo! I'll put you back there. Okay, <laughs> you guys, it smells like rubbing alcohol here because of how <laughs> so Stella that card is. <laughs> All right, that one's done. Next is this one. Let's grab the poppy one next. All right, so we got this one over here for Carissa. We need to grab out that. You should have a green, a green, two stumps here, a red and a white label. So we're gonna set this off to the side here. And we have another mat and then the two white layers. All right, so let's do the stamping. So this one changed it up. I mean, you could do thinking of you if you wanted or you could do just for you. I feel like either one could work. I think since I already have the thinking of you out already, I will go with the thinking of you. But just for you works as well. This one's back to the soft suede. So this card is very similar. Are the leaves evening evergreen? These leaves are, yes. These are cut out of evening evergreen. All right, so we've got the stumps here. I'm going back to thinking of you or still staying with it. There's one and two. And the inside, I think I'm gonna do that little leafy thing in evening evergreen. Oh, you guys, wait, we need to do some sponging. One moment, please. Let's just go around the edges. Like that. Let's grab that second one. Like that. I think we're done with that now. And then grab your evening evergreen if you want to do the greenery on the bottom. Same thing that we just did on the other two. Grab the three leaf first. And then that little single guy fits right in there. And I think that's it for stamping. Easy peasy on the stamping on this class, you guys. Not, not a lot to it. All right. This is where you're going to need your little, the big stumps here. 
and we'll fold our Poppy Parade base. Keep this card horizontal. And we're gonna do gluing, gluing. They're the same size, that five by three and three quarter. And then the soft suede mats are four by five and a quarter. And then this goes on here. You can flip these both over. And then they can go on to the front of the card and on the inside. So remember to keep it the right direction. You guys, when you use liquid glue like that, you can swirl it around until you get it exactly where you want it. Or when you use tear and tape or tape runner, then you can't. Now I got liquid glue right here as I was putting that on. I'm gonna wipe off a little bit of it and it's gonna be sticky there. Once it dries, I can grab my adhesive eraser and erase that. These stumps, we're gonna do the same thing that we did with the other card. We're going to attach the two bigger ones together. Thanks, Judy Immel. These two together, and I have the benefit of being able to go over the top of this like that and kind of match them up. And then we're going to grab, what do I wanna do? I think, I think, I think, I think, we're gonna attach this only on that side right there, with a little tear and tape, just to get it together, like that. I think it's crooked. So this is where you have your ability now to figure out, to make sure it's straight. I'm leaving this open here because I want to be able to stick my mushroom stumps under there. That's why I've got, and you know what I could do is put the tape back here like that. Now I can still sneak my mushroom stumps under there. The ribbons go out this way and this way. And it's the same as that last card where we are going to need lots of tear and tape hanging out on the side here. So here, here. And we're gonna do, the brown is gonna be slightly different though. So that goes on this side. The brown actually is a loop and a tail. So a loop, so grab that tear and tape with the end. You make your loop and then bring it out and cut your tail. We're gonna take that tear and tape here and put that right where it needs to go. And then grab, oh, Look at this, this is what I have left. So this might not be enough to do, let's see the next card here. Let's see, that's not enough for that. So to use this without letting this go to waste, it's not enough to do a tail and a loop, but it is enough to make your loop like that and we'll let it be and we'll come back with a new roll of ribbon and make the tail by itself. Let's grab the next one here. All right, Susan Bellamy, we'll check you later. So that <laughs> unravels a lot. I'm gonna cut this right at the diagonal. Since I'm cutting it, I'll cut it the right way. I'll get that in the garbage. And I'm gonna have it come out like the other way, I think, like that. And then you can cut that off. I'm gonna use tear and tape over the top. Let's just test it. Oh, perfect. Okay, and then on this one, brown next. So make your tail, I mean, sorry, your loop. I always say it's the tail, but it's, I always do the loop first, and then I bring the tail back out. And then trim that. Judy loves the double mat on the inside too, yay. I hoped that you guys would appreciate those double mats on this one. Then we're gonna do, catch that tear and tape. I should have a couple here waiting. Here, we're gonna make our loop first. 
I'm gonna put the tear and tape down to help hold that. And then bring the tail out. <laughs> Have you guys? <laughs> so uh, I think Mary Gunn knows that I love a lot of ribbon. <laughs> I love to use ribbon. You guys, it's always a goal to use ribbon on every card. Mary Gunn, I'll have to share the link with anybody who wants it, but Mary Gunn sent me a text message and she sent me a link of a YouTube video, which I had Tyler watch with me last night. I can share it with anybody, but it's all about this store in New York that has ribbon that's up to 100 years old. And it's like a store that's in the family for years and it was a like a 12 minute video on ribbon <laughs> and so she shared that with me I thought that was awesome I'm going to put some dimensionals around here I'm going to leave that like ah, you know what we're going to do is we're going to take this one off we're going to go for it and take that off and now all of this will just sit right on the front of your card like that. Uh, don't worry about your mushrooms or the leaves. We're coming back to them. We're gonna Stella, Ella, Ella some of the stuff. And Stella your leaves. If you remember from that first card, we just put a little glue dot on it and stuck it in where it needed to go. Make sure you Stella your mushrooms and then your stumps. There's two stumps for each set, right? Or one for each set. So there's four stumps. Two are facing one way and two are facing the other way. So make sure you match them up. All right. Now, same concept that we're going to do for putting our mushrooms together. I'm going to take one of these dimensionals. And we're going to put it right at the base of that. And we're going to catch the tip of that, right? And then I think just for good measure, we'll put a glue dot as well back there. Put the dimensional right at the base. Let's see if I got these right. Nope, I've got the two of the same. Hang on. We're gonna go back and grab that one. You can tell they have a different curve to them. One curves one way and one curves the other way. And then catch that and we're going to follow up with a just it's not coming out you guys that's like my goal is not to have your cards fall apart right so that goes right there and then what we can do also is put a little glue dot at the bottom come on little guy stick got that one and then we're gonna put a little glue dot at the bottom of that one and then we'll put the glue dot right at the bottom of that and because these leaves are just big enough you can put I put some black dimensionals that so you don't see the edge of it put that all right this kind of sneaks out over here like that and then the one mushroom we'll do this one first and tuck that that way and then this one it's like they're growing out of the stump right <laughs> okay let's go back to here so there was one of these little beadies that didn't it lost its uh, stickiness so we're going to take a glue dot and help it out and give it another life we're going to put the glue dot right there we can pick that up and put it right in the glue dot and then Little guy there, can do a couple up over here. And then I feel like there's another one and I really wanna use some of these. Oh, look at that conglomeration right there. I'm gonna grab one. You guys, you have a whole pack of the rustic metallic dots. Use as many or as few as you want. All right. Oh, the other thing you guys, don't forget, if you want, you could, you can Stella DSP, like there's no tomorrow because it will not bleed. Oh, so Jean said, if you apply a small amount of liquid glue to tear and tape, you have some wiggle room. Good idea. All right, there you got it. We've got another one done. So that's three of the six done. 
And let's pull the next one out. Well, the poinsettia one is next. That's this guy. We'll set this over here. And you have a red mat for the bottom. And then a white, because it's double matted. You have a red mat that's the same size for the top. You should have two of these mats. These are the picture this die cut. So when this got die cut, three labels got cut out and they got used on the three other cards. So in that, and then this is actually from the deckled rectangle. That's where this one comes from. You have a little piece of evening evergreen that is for the window in the back there. This is going to be for your poinsettia. And this is the inside. All right, what can we do? Let's, I guess, stamp that first. Oh, I got a little, <laughs> we're pulling out some new stamps now. There is a poinsettia in here and you are going to need to create a mask for it if this is what you use. And I think I will use just for you on this one because it fits in there better. What's on the inside? Oh yeah, the poinsettia, okay. Um, where is just for you? Right there. It's not the pink color, so I couldn't see it. <laughs> All right. Let's do, let's grab another block. And we need Poppy Parade ink. We're going to stamp our poinsettia first. And then we're going to talk about the masking. Now, this is a vertical card, too, so let's keep that that way. Grab this. We're going to stamp our poinsettias first because that will be easiest. Put that there. All right, so no rhyme or reason to it, except for I would stamp it consistently with that down there. And let's do this one next. So you got a little scrap of white paper in your kit like that. And then let's stamp that down there and that there. I think that's it for the poppy color. Now, evening evergreen, we need, we're gonna stamp the just for you. And when you stamp this, make sure you stamp it more to the right because you need your poinsettia to cover up the other side. So just for you. When I see just for you, I always think of just for men. <laughs> that commercial with whatever it was that they were selling that was just for men. All right, then there's a leaf that needs to get filled in. Okay, you have to create a mask to be able to do this. And I have have this from the class that we did. There was a let's just stamp that we did. But what you need to do is stamp it in whatever color you want, actually. I did it red because that was what was on the ink. And then you need to fussy cut it out. And then after you fussy cut it, you need to line it up right over the top. And hopefully it has its stickiness yet. This is a little not as sticky as it should be. What you can do then is you stamp right over the top of it. And make sure it doesn't move. So I was trying to hold this at the same time. It's lost its stickiness. But we're going to make it work. And then I feel like there's one more. So by creating that mask, what it's doing is it's not letting you stamp in there. So it kind of allows you to have those leaves coming out. Okay, so that's the one. And then because we kept the stamp facing the same way. I'm going to just put some good pressure there and see if that helps. So right there. And then this one. Just go around and around. And because I've already done it once, I know exactly which leaves need it. All right, so there's the other one. If you need to touch up anything, you can always take out a marker of the same color and kind of fill it in more. And then we'll do this one. Now you have to be careful. The more that you keep using this mask, 
the more that the ink is on there and getting wet and it's getting on my fingers. So what I'm gonna do is try to use my tool here to help hold it. And we're gonna go right there. It's like doing surgery, right? Scalpel. So that one, do that guy. Like, <laughs> I made this mask back in September when that class was, the Ring with Nature class. And so it has, <laughs> it served its purpose, but it definitely has lost its stickiness. I think after this one, it's going to be uh, tossed. All right, so let's see if this works. Hold that here. There. Okay, three left. This is the hardest part of this class, I think, you guys, is the masking for the poinsettia. It's not that hard, it's just more tedious. Okay, that's it. So we got that done. Uh, inside, I'll leave it blank, and then you can figure out if you wanna put like Merry Christmas or Happy whatever on the inside. Uh, we can go ahead. Oh, there's Merry Christmas. Wait, it's actually part of the stamp set. One moment, please. There is a sentiment in here. Then it says Merry Christmas. So it's perfect. So let's do it. As long as we got it, might as well flaunt it, right? Thanks, Maria Gilbertson. All right. That one is going to be f completed. Yay. So there's that. And that. Nice. <laughs> we got one actually done on the inside. Nice, nice, nice. All right. That's for that. Now, let's get glue happy. These couple things can get glued. So it's our inside and our designer series paper. The red mats, the poppy mats. Oh, man, that's really big. Hang on. Um, oh, I know why what's happening. It's big because the white frame goes over the top of it. So just try to get that centered as best you can. Ultimately, this goes over the top of it, and that makes it for a less of a poppy parade border. And then this one goes on here. And, oh, <laughs> I picked it up and it wasn't attached. So we'll try this here. Ha, ah, Jean Maxwell, you are amazing to say that. Yes, my first Christmas card that I've made for 2023. Oh man, I can't ever say that I've made a Christmas card this early in the new year. <laughs> wow. Oh, look at that. That is that is a true statement. All right, so that goes there. We needed to fold this and burnish our edges. Vertical card. That is our inside. That goes here. Can anybody else say they made a Christmas card this year yet? <laughs> and then this will go here. This, you guys, I don't have the magic of TV, but this will need to get fussy cut. So let's do that quick. <laughs> I can't ever say I made a Christmas card this early in the year. That kind of is an astonishing thought to even think about. And it happened. <laughs> I would never have put that together, Jean, until you said that. So, <laughs> if I, yeah, that's funny. I'm just chuckling about that. So you guys, we're going to Frankenstein this all cut it all apart. And if you really wanted to take this card, you could always um, stamp the leaves separately and stamp that poinsettia separate, right? Cut them all out separately and then pop up the poinsettia and put the leaves behind and give it lots of dimension. And you wouldn't have to do that masking. All right, got that job done. This and this is what's next. Now, the green is actually flat on here, and this has popped up. It's really hard to kind of guess where to go. I would, you can either use your dimensionals, your sides, however you want, but I'm going to pull these guys back out since I can. And we're going to work them all the way around the card here and pop that frame up. And let's see here. I'm just going to do that. So I can work with smaller pieces. So that one can go here. And then we need 
this short one here. I'm gonna put this one closer to the middle section here. I'm gonna use this here. And again, this one, I'm gonna put this one closer so that it can catch my green. So now I don't have to guess where my green needs to go. Oh, that one went really crooked on me. Again, using the strips or the sides of your dimensionals could work too if you cut them. Grab that all off. And then this is going to get centered over the top. You might not catch the side designer paper. That's okay. As long as you caught, um, as long as you caught, okay, so it goes like this. I just noticed that it's the same size as the opening over here. Um, it's, <laughs> but it's okay. As long as you catch this side, if you have any exposure over on this side, like I can see my finger through here. It's just like there. You cover that up with a flower, okay? So don't worry if, just make sure this side is covered all the way to the end. That's what's important. All right, let's put these guys back in here for now. And what I'm gonna do then is put a little liquid glue there. Flip this. I gotta be very careful to get this centered because once it starts going down, you don't have a you don't have a lot of recovery with this one. There. But it worked out okay. Oh, our flower. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are going to hate this ribbon or love this ribbon when you're done. Uh, same concept on this one. Let's grab our tear and tape. And where's my end here? Right there. Get some stuff waiting. Some short ones, some long ones. We're going to need a few. And we'll put this over here. Um... I don't know which way the poinsettia looks, but I bet it's like that. Okay, so this, we're gonna have one at the top and we're gonna have one. It's kind of like on the side, actually. It's not straight up and down from each other. It's close, but they're angled just a little bit differently. And the brown ribbon, did I use up the brown ribbon? I feel like I may have. I did. I think, oh, it's on the floor, haha. -ha. All right, when in doubt, look on the floor, right? So that one is already cut at an angle. So we just need to cut another one. I'll leave that right like that, a little shorter. Now this one comes out kind of cockeyed here. Uh, that is there, so this one comes out, let's go like that, and then this one comes out and I have them facing the same way. Let's see. All right, yep, something like that. So one's going that, they're kind of making a slight little curve. And then a little tear and tape over the top of that. Get it ready for our ribbon. And now that ribbon is right here. I like got a loop and a tail and a loop and a tail. All right, now. That tail is cut really nice. I'm gonna have it be the starting point here. And make a, a little loop then. There's not a lot of space back here. And I think what I'll do is help that out by putting some tape right there. So that, that sticks, we're gonna cut that off. Put another piece right there, and I feel like that'll look really nice there. That's that's good. Take the tear and tape off, so we've got some extra working room. And then this one has. I'm gonna do the tail first, or the, the loop first, like that. But don't worry if the tear and tape hangs over the edge, because you can just fold it right back like that and we need to tear and tape so I have it ready oh Mary Carls I'm so happy that you found your other white yay that's good 
um, Mary Carlos thought she was missing one of these, but they were stuck together. I think that Tammy die cut them at the same time, so that's probably why that happened. Um, wondering if I want that to go this way. So we're gonna just cut it like that. Nothing as as many things. Fraying the white three quarter frayed ribbon. Beautiful ribbon, fraying to twist it into a circle. Not good. <laughs> yeah, sometimes you wanna like you don't want the fraying to happen, and then it happens, and then it's not what you want. But then you go with it and intentionally fray it, and just go with it. You guys, that's what we're making this little ensemble thing. <laughs> like I call everything a little ensemble when you need to put it together to create this little collagey thing. So that is what I've got over here. This for you, I'm gonna go back to these and cut off a little section. Oh man, maybe like that, I guess. <laughs> and it's gonna go along the top. I guess we'll just use that whole thing. So that's along the top. And then we're gonna put, I think, tear glue. And tear tape glue. We're going to use a little line of liquid glue right here. I don't know how much I really need, so I'm just going to guess a little there. And then this hangs slightly down into this window, and that glue will catch it, and the tear that dimensional strip will be perfect there. This thing, what do you do to put this on here? I need some extra support right there to catch it. I'm gonna go back to this guy and we're gonna cut it into thirds. And we're gonna prep this area, this area, and this. So we're filling this in with dimensionals. And that's gonna help give the poinsettia some support right there. And then we need, I think, more, I'm just gonna make sure there's more tear and tape on the back of this to help hold it. Really good. And we'll fill in, if we need to fill in more tear and tape, we will. You guys got a tear and tape workout today. That's gonna go right about here. Let's see here. Do we have structure? Okay, we're gonna put a little line of tear and tape right here. That will help hold that ribbon. I don't know, I think that's really secure. Now, do you like it without it frayed or do you want it frayed? This one, I frayed the ends, but you know what I'll do on this one? I'm gonna leave the ends nice and crisp like that. Uh, the rustic metallic dots are, oh, I just lost two of them. So we're gonna put one over here. We're gonna put a big one over here. And I was trying to pull this out to grab some of these small ones. Three small ones right in the center. On my sample card I stamped yellow in the middle, but it looks blah to me. I think it looked really nice just having the three like that. And I don't think we Stella anything. So what you could Stella, don't go, don't do anything with the poinsettia, but you can definitely Stella this window in here. And then all of this designer series paper, put a little bit there. You could do a little bit on your ribbons. I like it. I'm good with it. It's like, leave it well done. When leave well enough alone, right? All right. Whew. I like this one. You guys, if you don't have these picture, this dies, you might consider getting them because they have the rectangles. And then if you remember from the, uh, the game night, we had the penguins with the circles that we used. If you want to, maybe not leaving well enough alone, <laughs> you could add another one here. Another one there. Okay, I think we're good now. All right, you guys, that is, oh, that's number five, four. Whew, okay, we got two more to go, you guys. What are we at? Two hours. Okay, we have two more to go. Our house card, my stomach is growling. I don't even know if you guys can hear it or not, but this girl's getting hungry. <laughs> so, <laughs> all right, let's create a drink of water. And then that will help me. All right. We got our house card next. And then we have our bird card. So let's bring these two to the top. I think this one's relatively easy. Take your base, fold it in half. You guys, everything was scored for you. 
so that you don't have to worry about that. So we've got this one's horizontal and we've got the house. Which house am I gonna do on this one? I think I'm gonna do that one for this one. And you have a frame of cutout. That's for your back mat here, okay? So you got, it gets covered up. You have a deckled rectangle and then your rectangle from the picture, this dies. Two inside white mats and two inside soft suede mats. What did we do here? Oh, the little leaf. All right, that works good. Grab your piercing mat. We're gonna stamp that little green leaf again. Uh, if you wanted to, you could stamp your house. I've not used these stamps, so maybe we should do that. What color? We're gonna do a blue roof with a soft suede bottom. All right, we're gonna go for it. Let's use a stamp that I've never used before. <laughs> I don't think I have. And this one, we're gonna do Love and Warmth. This could be definitely a housewarming card if you need one. And let's clean up the poinsettia. I think we're done with that. Judy loves it, yay. Has a lot with the ribbon. You guys, when you really understand what you can do with ribbon, you can find different ways to incorporate it on your cards and use it differently. All right, so there's our love and warmth. And this guy is clean. Look at this, these stamps have never been off of here. Well, they were put on. <laughs> they were off to begin with, but now they're being used. We're gonna see what the stamp looks like. We're gonna stamp the bottom. And I think I'm gonna do it in second strength soft suede, just to make it a little lighter. Cause I think that's gonna be really dark. I'm gonna do all right, there's one. And two. And love and warmth is also. So when you stamp the love and warmth, make sure you put it more to the right so that your house can go on the left. You guys are gonna be so excited about the ribbon on this card because it's so easy compared to what we've been doing. There's love and warmth. And then we're gonna do a red, da -da, a blue roof. All right, grab the Knight of Navy. I think I'm gonna go for first strength on this just so it's a little darker. Yep, that'll be fine. <laughs> All right, we got a house. Uh, there's another saying in this one that says happy anniversary. This would make a great anniversary card as well. If you have um, the set, it says happy anniversary. So you could give this to somebody who's having an anniversary. Kidoki. I think that's it for stamping. Yay. Let's get glue happy, you guys. All right. This one can go here. We need. All right. So be careful. I'm actually going to glue the top of this versus the back of this. Otherwise, you'll get the ink, uh, the glue through the middle. So I'm being strategic with my gluing here. Let's get that guy out of the way. Right along the edge there. This piece here and our deckled rectangle. Let's get all of that glued. So we're gonna put that guy. Hi Donna Grushki. I'm glad that you could join us. We're on the fifth card at the moment, and we have one more to go after this, but it's, I'm glad that you could get done what you needed to. That's what's awesome, you guys, about online classes is you don't have to be here when I'm here. <laughs> if you have questions and you can't ask them during the live, you can always reach out to me afterwards. This, then, we're going to glue right away as well. Get that right onto our card. The ribbon doesn't need to go behind it. So there's no reason why we can't get this glued right away. So that one goes there. Oh, that looks so nice on the inside. Having that house, the glue and the soft suede really match nicely. And then this goes on here. Well, this deckled rectangle gets put right in the middle. Like that. And I would take Terran tape again and run it right here. 
And I'm gonna make two tracks like that. And that's where my natural finish ribbon is gonna go, the tan one. So we're gonna run that right here now. I'm gonna cut this with my scissors. Oh man, this is hard. You gotta make sure that you try to get it straight as possible. And I think I frayed my ends because I thought that that would kind of take away from it not being cut so straight. Cause it's hard to cut that ribbon straight. And I think we're gonna cut just a little more. There, and then I did. I purposely frayed the ends on this one because otherwise you could kind of see that it's not really straight. You have to kind of trim that off the corner just like that. All right, there's that. Now, the brown one. So I still have a little bit left here. Uh, the brown one's the same thing. You're going to want to put... It's going to be harder to pick this off, though, because using tear and tape on ribbon is not easy. You don't want it to go all the way to the end. And I'm going to guess it goes right about here. Press it down really good, because then what happens is you can catch the corner. Pull that up. I've got a good angle on this end already, so I'm going to put that down where I think it needs to go. And then I'm going to cut this one going the same direction, like that. And then this little guy is going to go right about so. I popped it up with dimensionals. Um, uh, we'll do a few here. Definitely if I had smaller ones, I'd still use six smaller ones versus six big ones. And then got to restock my little mini dimensionals in white over here. This will go right about here. And then the house will go right about there. Now, I want to glue this part flat and I want to pop up the other part of the house. And then we'll put one over here. Uh, and then we'll put liquid glue right on the corner here, just like that. And that will give us height on the side. You can see on this house, it was a little different. It was cut in like that, so you got to see a little more of the ribbon. Like if you want, you can have that go up a little higher if you want to see more ribbon, but I think I'm gonna leave it right there. <laughs> this one was easy, guys. This was like your easy card, I think. Besides fussy cutting out a house. Uh, we're going to add some of these guys. I really want to use some of these here stuck on the side, but we'll find a different time to use those. But we'll use that one. Grab that guy right there. And then a small. I think I got a small one right there. And another small Stella, let's grab her, put her to work. And Stella, the house, definitely. Let's go over the top of that. It's designer paper. And then, yeah, so you probably got this paper and you're like, what am I going to do with all these little houses, right? It's not like the most attractive piece of designer series paper, but it does have a purpose. Like wedding card, um, anniversary cards, get well cards, um, welcome to your new home cards. There's definitely purpose for them, but it was an easy one. I, to me, that seemed easy. Well, for you guys, all the die cutting was uh, done, right? <laughs> so when the ribbon was not so complicated compared to what we've had of the other ones. Okay, so one more drink of water. You guys, we have one card left. And we're going to roll right through this one. And I got these guys. We're going to put them all in here for Carissa and this one. Got a little ribbon left. Look at that. That should be just enough. And then on this one, it is a different fold. It has an inch cut off. And the inch is what's used on the bottom section here. Is there a bird, 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 bird is the word card. You've got your little stump that you already cut out. 
and you've cut your designer paper. So let's put one of these over there. You've got two crumb cakes that you're gonna use for, they're the same. So you have four exactly the same. You guys, can you imagine Tammy cut all these little pieces out? Oh my gosh. You need your little strips. So this is the one inch that was over on the side here, you guys. And then just a little bit was cut off. You need your white inside and a, you got a mat then. All right, so let's do our, so this one was a perfect get well card. Uh, it was nice. I think of birds and getting well. <laughs> all right, let's clean up the Merry Christmas. Yep, let's clean this guy up. We'll get the get well out. We're done with the house. We'll put him away. We're done with the rooftop. What's on the inside? Oh, the brown one. Okay, that's why I think I went with brown. But I think we'll do, oh, I don't know. Maybe we'll do brown for this one because I feel like there's a lot of brown going on. And there's a little baby stamp right here. Let's get that cleaned up. Get our sentiment switched out. So we have Merry Christmas is done. We'll grab Get Well. We're done with the house. Feels good to use a stamp for the first time, doesn't it? Oh, so Christy said she's using this one as a, her 43rd wedding anniversary card. That's perfect. You know, guys, cards are so versatile. Just because it has a sentiment on it doesn't mean you can't use a different sentiment. Usually they're all pretty, like this card could be get well, it could be happy birthday, thinking of you, congrats on your new job. I mean, there's so much room for cards that, you know, when people say I need a birthday card, well, we'll, well I, I need more of like the genre of the style card <laughs> to understand what you want. You guys, when you stamp this, make sure you put the get well soon more to the right versus the left because that stump goes over there. So that's done. And then I think I am gonna go for the brown, the brown, we're gonna make a dead branch and it's gonna be okay. I'm okay with it. It's just, it's gonna match the card better. There's not a lot of evening evergreen in this one. And just remember that you need to put this on the left hand side versus the right because of putting that designer paper on the right hand side. So there's that. And I think that's it for stamping. Oh. All right. Let's move this stuff out of the way. Let's get glue happy. So if you guys have a scent, oh, it's thinking of you. Oh, we got to do one more thing. One moment. Get well soon. And the thinking of you, that fits perfectly in there. And I might as well do that right away in Night of Navy because it fits good. Now, here's the trick, guys. When you, I would put that piece of paper there. So you have a guide. And then the thinking of you goes there. If you stamp it in the center, you're not going to be happy with yourself because it needs, it won't be centered then once you put the designer paper uh, and the other trick that you guys can do is if you flip it upside down, then you don't risk getting ink on it. There. And then put it back. So you guys, you're getting some tips on Tip Tuesday here. So I haven't done a Tip Tuesday in a while because there's been a lot <laughs> going on lately. All right, so we'll put that over here. And now let's get glue happy. This can get glued. This can get glued. This can get ready to get glued. This can get glued. Watch this, you guys. We're going to do our inside, our designer series paper, the little strip of designer series paper. This gets glue only right there. So let's get that done. So our little sentiment goes over here. I've got a little border on the right and a little border on the bottom and it hangs slightly over the top. Then this designer paper will fit right on your mat. Your mat is the five and a quarter by four. Ah, no, I lied. Five and a quarter by three. And then this piece right here, the soft suede is your mat. Now that's the five and a quarter by four. And then this guy 
will go right there. Now here's the deal. I cut my designer paper a hair short. I'm just going to center it and make a little white border all the way around. I should have glued the designer paper onto the white and then I could have trimmed the top off. But instead what I did is I made a little white border all the way around. So it was intentional then. All right, these get flipped over and get glued onto our card base. Make sure you get your birds right this time, that they go up and down. Just like that, and then this. Hi Donna Simmer, thanks for the Christmas card. I got it and showed it off earlier in class today. I appreciate it. Hi Susan Bellamy is back. All right, you guys, that's how that looks. Now, I'm not liking that where I put it. Let's see if it has wiggle room. I want it all the way to the edge and I'm gonna put it so that you see the bottom versus the top. And I'm okay with that. I'd rather have it just that one little bit be off and then have all of that be consistent. I could see that when it looked better and that's okay. All right, now back to our glory days of ribbon here. We're gonna embellish, not embellish, we're gonna Stella these little guys. With some Stella and this. Let's get the little stump glued on here so we have an idea of where the ribbon needs to go. We're gonna put that. And I noticed that when I die cut this, there's a lot of white extra here. So let's get some of that off of there. That stump goes on something like that. All right, we need tear and tape waiting in the wings again. So let's grab a few pieces. We need some longer pieces and some shorter pieces. All right, then the little, the brown ribbon comes out first. Well, you got two options with this one. And I did it opposite on this one because it was an afterthought to do these because that die hadn't gotten used. So you have to figure out, do you like that die on the top or do you like the die behind? It's just a little extra roughage or foliage for the card. Uh, so I, I don't know exactly if I like which one, one way better than the other or not. So I think I'm gonna go with the ribbon like this first. And then I think I'm gonna add one of these back over here so you can kind of see it. Then I'm gonna add some more tear and tape. Grab your natural finish ribbon. Oh man, okay. The loop, <laughs> loopy first, like that. And you got some wiggle room. You gotta figure out where you want it coming. I'm coming out from the edge of the stump there. Make a loop. I'll put some tear and tape down. And then bring that like that. I'm gonna cut it longer than I need it so I can trim it later. And then we're gonna put this one across the whole back. And we'll do this ribbon. I'll put it like the peaky in the middle. I'm gonna have it coming at an angle this way. So we're gonna do that. And grab the short tear and tape. Your samples has a brown mat under the one inch piece. Yes, the, the sample has a brown mat under the one inch piece. Yeah. It's because your designer paper, go, it should go end to end. I think that you figured it out, <laughs> yay. Um, then the other brown thing here, we're gonna put that over on the side back here more. I want it to have there, something like, something like that is good. Let's put a little more tear and tape there. 
and then back to our natural finish ribbon. We're going to do the, the loop on this side first. And we need one more piece of tear and tape. <laughs> so do you guys like all this ribbon, like the loops and the tails, or is it too much? And that might be a loaded question. I'm not sure if I want the answer, but I hope that you guys say it's fun to do it every now and then. I'm going to cut this long. Not every card needs to be this labor intensive with ribbon, but honestly, it is fun to see it in action every now and then. I think that's it for this one. And holy Moses, this is all I have left of the brown ribbon. That's not a lot. So let's, what I do is I fold over some tape and I'll tape that to the next roll that I have so that I don't let it go to waste. And back to this guy. I think what we're gonna do is peel this off and we'll fill in with dimensionals. Over one over there, there, and here. Now you gotta be careful. You can't have a dimensional right there. <laughs> you gotta put it Let's see here. You gotta put it right about there. And then you don't risk going over the edge. <laughs> because we don't want to make a trick card. You love all the ribbon when I don't have to figure out what to do with it. I agree. Love the ribbon accents. Good. And this one's gonna go. I have the blue all the way over to the edge. So that it goes from end to end. Now that was good. We didn't want tape right there. Figure out which way you want your ribbon angled. I think I'm going to angle it this way. And on this one, I think I want to fray it because I feel like when a bird is making its nest, they're looking for anything to help them make a nest, including branches and hair and fur and feathers. And this kind of seems like the kind of thing you would have. <laughs> it should be frayed on the end. So just going to slightly do that. Boom. All right. I think that's it for the ribbon scissors. That got to work out today. The glue got to work out today. And we need to embellish this one. All right. I got... I'm going to grab that guy. got one here. One there. I got up here. There's one floating in the sky. Ruben makes the card prettier. Yay! And then right there. And I got a big one. But I'm going to put a small one over here. And I don't like it right in the wing. So I'm going to put it up just a hair. And I think you got to be careful. If you put embellishments down and press them, sometimes they'll pick up the paper. Whew. Okay. I've got my five on there. I think that's good. Look at that pile of <laughs> tape here, you guys. Okay, I think that we need to Stella a little bit yet. We'll put those away. I lost the cover in the inner. Oh, I didn't lose it. It's right there. I can go back. Oh, you guys, we used up a bunch of these. So when you do two cards, you're going to use up a good chunk of your rustic metallic dots. Okay, Stella. Stella the stump for sure. And then you can Stella that blue border here and then your ribbon and I know we still at our crumb cake branches already but we do them again Whew. Uh, so yeah this goes here and let's look a let, let's take a look see at the, what we made today <laughs> six cards two and a half hours a half hour of talking and chitty chatty on the front end we didn't do so bad all right oh and here's one of these guys we've got and what's your favorite <laughs> I, I don't know. Let me just see what I've got here. What would be your favorite? Hmm. I love Add to the Beauty of the Cards. They sure do, Judy. I definitely agree. All right, so these are the six we made today. I love, and I would never have gotten the picture of this dies until Carissa actually showed me, like, I think she had used them on a card or two. Now we've used them a time or two after that. I love using these picture this dies, these guys. And I love it when we take the insides and then use them here, here, and here. So they got 
completely used, like that whole thing got used up. Um, there's something I love about the acorn here with it being shiny with the tan and the bronze. I love that. And um, this one was like, I love the simplicity of this. The bird card is awesome. If people love birds. They're going to love that. The floating frame technique is super cool as well. I love using that floating frame and doing something like that on the inside. All right. Okay, the bird one. So Christy said the bird one is her favorite. I absolutely love all the cards. Great. Awesome. Marshall loves all. Just a reminder, you guys, I do have this class still available. I think I counted off that I needed nine. I have nine kits like ready to go yet um, that I've got. They're all kitted up. Uh, what we're going to do is a door prize. And I don't have numbers written down for everybody, but I have up to 18 here. And then we'll go 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, and then we'll go up here. So if somebody wins on that, I don't have a number, I will um, count it out. And so, but what we have 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29. So we have 29 um, that we will do the drawing for, for the random number generator for a door prize for today. Uh, Tyler's little acorn. I know, right, Betty Ball? Tyler's little acorn. I should make a bunch of those little acorns and put them in his closet, attach them to the inside of his shoe, um, and just put them all around where his things are. <laughs> I think he would like it. Kimberly wants one of these. Okay. So Kimberly, we can make it happen that you have one. I will add your name to the list here so that you get in on the drawing, the drawing. All right. And Marsha Long wants a kit too. Awesome. Okay. So Marsha Long We'll add you for the drawing as well. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, Diane, so thank you for designing such beautiful cards. You're so very welcome. We enjoy doing it. Um, we used it for expressions and in ink. And you're well, right? So she made me buy something. <laughs> and she's saying you're welcome. Yes, thank you for making me buy something, Carissa. <laughs> um, so tomorrow's class. Okay, so Hildy, you're saying can't wait for tomorrow's class. There is no class tomorrow, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> it's Wednesday. Um, I have no in person. I'm, I'm, let me stop, turn around and listen. Okay. Tomorrow's class is in person, not online. So there is class tomorrow, but it's in the hive in person. I have 13 or 12 signed up for class tomorrow night. I have the catalog launch party on Thursday night, and then we have fitting florets on Friday. Okay. So just to correct you, Hildy, not to um, have you be live tomorrow, because I think a couple people have done that in the past. Uh, so let's see if I missed anything. Um, okay. So we did add um, Marsha and Kimberly to the mix. Um, so they are up to number 20, and then we'll add the ordering down. So what we'll do here, you guys, is we'll pull up random number generator. And let's see here, random number generator. And we have, oh man, now I lost count. So 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31. So we'll do 31 instead. And we'll hit generate. 16. 16 is Anna's Astro. Look at that. Lucky girl. That's what she gets for helping me <laughs> let me cut up her paper. Yay, Anna's Astro. Okay. I will put a door prize also in with your package that you're coming to pick up tomorrow. Yay. Okay, cool. Um, I don't have any cards that I did for drawings, you guys. I have a little pile here, a little stockpile. Uh, let's see if I can show you how here that little stockpile right here that are those will be winners someday but I haven't done them yet um, I need to go into the videos and pull the winners out um, Chris Kneebaum you did not purchase this kit so we can make sure that you get one as well so Chris I will add you to the list here all right so Chris Kneebaum you're on my list we'll connect for Marsha Kim and Chris we'll connect um to get the, the class to you. Um, all right, so just to recap, let's show you really quick what's going on because people have been asking, you know, we've been talking about what's coming up. This is what we're doing on Friday morning, you guys. This is Fitting Florette's five cards. We're gonna be making, for those that do the class, you're actually doing five cards, but we did three of each card on this one. And then this is your fun fold, like that. And the last card is also a fun fold. All right, so fun stuff. So that's Friday morning. You guys, I have three of this class left unaccounted for. And then for the catalog launch party that Hildy was talking about, um, this class is Thursday night or in person um, Wednesday and Saturday. 
um, a fun fold, similar to the other one, but this one's a vertical one. And then you'll either get this barn card or this barn card. Now, this is, um, it's like a little pocket card, but it's actually not glued on the side here. It's just folded up. So you'll get one or the other. I have no, it's no rhyme or reason for which one you get. Uh, this one, you'll get one of the, either the pink or the coral. And it's like that stepped up card. Oh, you guys, this one killed me last week. Cutting and scoring all this paper for you guys, it was a lot. <laughs> a lot, a lot, a lot. And then like, why do I do fun folds? Because you love them. <laughs> and then this one, you'll either get the coral or the blue. And it opens up like this. And this also is a little gift card holder here. So you'll get either the blue one or you will get the purpley coral one. And so four cards Thursday night. You guys, I have some left of this. I honestly, at this moment, can't tell you how many I have left because people have been signing up left and right. I know I made 96 kits of this one. Um, I think I'm at 80 or 85. So I want to say roughly there's 15 left if I had to guess. Um, so don't wait until it's too late, <laughs> I guess. That was all I can say on that one. If um, Come Thursday night, I think I might have some left, but who knows, by Thursday night, you guys might be like, um, more people might want them and then they might be gone. So um, if you ever want a class, don't hesitate to reach out and get your name on the list right away so that I, at least I hold it for you. All right, 2.35, uh, 12.37. So Honey's gonna be at the event in two hours, so I've got an hour <laughs> to work on things, yay. Um, all right, you guys. So the Ringed with Nature PDF tutorial will be available in my online store within the next 24 hours, I'm guessing. I have the video link now and I can add it to the PDF and then I upload it. Um, there'll be a thank you email that comes out. So if you're part of my email group, you guys will see that email. If you're not part of my email group, make sure you go to my website, cardsbychrisb.com. Go to cardsbychrisb.com and sign up to get my emails because then you'll see that kind of stuff when it comes out. Deb Norman, have a great day as well. Um, so uh, that thank you email will come out. The PDF tutorial will be available. If you're on my team, you get the PDF tutorials for free. Um, they're in my Facebook group. And so you can access... Um, um, you can access that. Yes, Chris Niebaum, you can definitely get the fun fold. Um, I, uh, you guys, Carissa got me hooked up with this awesome little um, purple, of course, purple binder thing. And we've got a nice, um, look at how professional this looks right here, you guys. Look at that. So, um, yes. So, Chris, I will definitely get you signed up here um, for the fun folds. I know I have 52 already for the online I have 52 plus 12 is 64, 65, 66, 7, 8, 9, 72. Oh, so 72. So whatever 96 minus 72, that's how many I have left for fun folds, you guys. Um, and they will be gone within the next week and a half, I would I would probably guess. So uh, they're going to be great. Once you guys see them, you're going to love them and how easy it is to make them. All right. Yay, lots of fun. Thanks for sharing. You betcha. All right, you guys. So... No tip Tuesday. Today was class, right? So no tip Tuesday today. I've kind of fallen um, with doing sometimes two and three and four lives a week. I don't have more time to do tip Tuesdays. But Kelly has been really consistent about the Technique Thursdays, you guys. So keep watching for Technique Thursday on Thursday. We'll have class Thursday night and Friday morning. Um, if anybody, I have seven spots left for the winter creative escape. I just counted that up yesterday as well. Uh, so if you want to get on that, um, let me know. Or if you want more information on the winter creative escape, it's for demonstrators only or discount shoppers or hobbyists. Um, however you call yourself, as long as you're, you have a demo ID number, then you can attend. Uh, I think I'm at 89 and there's 96. So there might be nine left. I'm not sure. Um, but is, that's also winding down and that is next week. Um, yeah. So, all right. I don't know if I have anything else. Just also a reminder, the guessing game. Make sure you get your answers submitted by Friday night. If you want to participate in any, any of the guessing games, Kelly's going to be um, pulling the winners over the weekend, okay? Um, yeah, I don't know. If you guys need anything, don't hesitate to reach out. Um, I try to answer as fastly as I can, depending on what's going on with kidding and cutting and designing. <laughs> so, all right, you guys. Happy Tuesday. Lots of sunshine, love, and big hugs to you. We'll see you guys later. Love you a long time. Bye. One, two, three, four, five. Remembering to wait.